Memorial Stadium as the quarry, the student section, starts to fill up clad in cream and crimson looking for that first W of the season for the Indiana Hoosiers. College football on the Big Ten Network this afternoon, and here's the matchup. The South Carolina State Bulldogs out of the MEAC against the Hoosiers from Indiana. It is great to have you with us for our game today. Tom Wormy along with the coach, Jerry DiNardo. They let this guy out of the studio this week. You're on location, coach. How's it feel? It's great. Nice to be next to you, Tom. 0-2 <laughs> for Indiana, coach. You would hesitate to say that the third week of the season is make or break, but this is real close. It's not make or break, but it's a matchup opponent. Indiana plays like they did last week against Virginia. They win the game. Jeff Thomas on defense for Indiana at the linebacker position has led this team in tackling the first two weeks of the season, the backbone of the unit. And he has to have a presence inside. South Carolina State will split out the Indiana defense and run up the middle. And maybe more important than anything, they need the leadership and the emotion that Jeff Thomas brings to them. Offensively for Indiana, the big strike ability of Edwin Wright Baker and his favorite target, DeMarlo Belcher. These guys hooked up for a 65-yard TD pass in the first week of the season. Edwin Wright Baker, a young quarterback. He's done just what you expected. He's managed the game. He's 58% completion. But today, they need big plays out of him. And when he does that, he might as well look at DeMarlo Belcher. The plan's going to be to throw the ball on the perimeter to Belcher, make South Carolina State's secondary come up, do that a couple times, let the opponent make the adjustment, and then at the perfect time, they're going to sit back and they're going to throw the ball over the head of South Carolina State defense. That's the plan. All right, Coach, time for the principal financial group edge to the game, Bulldogs and Hoosiers. South Carolina State has to run the ball and gain four more yards of first down. Stay on schedule. They have to keep the ball inside and in front of defense. No deep balls over their head. Indiana has to run the ball on offense. Expect to see more eye formation today than we've seen in the past. And number two, make sure that the secondary helps support the run versus South Carolina State. Chris Atkins is safety. Tom will be on the line of scrimmage most of the day. It's the MEAC against the Big Ten. The Bulldogs and Hoosiers for the first time ever. Kickoff straight away at Memorial Stadium. And it's all coming up next on the Big Ten Network. field in front of this crowd here at Memorial Stadium. Fireworks going off. The Hoosiers hoping there will be fireworks as well during the course of the afternoon. As we are here at Memorial Stadium, Bloomington, Indiana, time to check in with the third member of our broadcast team, Stacy Pates. Hey, guys, thank you so much. Hey, Coach, glad to have you out of the studio. You know, for the third consecutive week, the South Carolina State Bulldogs are trying to win on the road. After last week's win over conference foe Bethune, Coach Buddy Pugh said it was exhilarating. So coming in here to IU, one and one is a big deal for this team. A couple other big deals for this team come in the form of a pair of former BCS players players. You have seniors Dominique Ellis from NC State, the transfer, and also the transfer Christian Thompson from Auburn. These two guys combined for 19 tackles and four interceptions at key times to get that victory. Expect those guys to be forces on the field today as well. Thank you, Stacy. We look forward to your reports all afternoon long. Buddy Pugh in his ninth season, his team has had a piece of its conference championship the last three years in a row. Across the field, it's Kevin Wilson in his first year in cream and crimson. Nine years as the offensive coordinator at Oklahoma. In that time, the Sooners won 99 games while he was part of the coaching staff. He brings tremendous experience and energy talk to this program. Opening kick is a short one. And it's fielded right near the 25-yard line. It was Mullen, the 22, and there is a flag on the play. Short kick intentional look like Tom. You know, right away, South Carolina State's going to try to equalize what they think is a talent imbalance in favor of North, uh, in favor of Indiana. Our referee is Mike Cannon. We have a free kick out of bounds. Ball will be placed on the 40-yard line. First down. So Indiana will start at its own 40. Number seven is your quarterback, Edward Wright Baker. The sophomore for the Hoosiers has a couple of touchdown passes this season. 
He's also had 25 rushes for 60 yards, and his coach reference 58% through the air for Edward Wright Baker. Quick pass, complete. That is Belcher on the edge, and he gets knocked down. Drummond made the tackle for South Carolina State. As we take a look at the offensive lineup, and we start up front with some new faces inserted in the lineup. Taylor, Rarig, and Eckert. A redshirt freshman and a couple of true freshmen involved in that offensive line change for the Hoosiers, who is second down. This is Belcher again, and he gets upended. Tom, that first play was a run pass audible. The South Carolina was in the box, and Indiana threw it out to the flank. The backs and receivers for the Hoosiers, and Deweese Wilson. We made five catches for 60 yards last week in the loss to Virginia. Also had a touchdown catch in the back of the end zone. Juggled it and got his foot in and made a fantastic catch. We've got a flag here before the play can develop. Full start. Offense. Number 72. Five-yard penalty. Repeat third down. That's Andrew McDonald, one of the only guys who has, has experience this year. You'd think one of the young, one guy, young guys would jump off. The center, Maddie, and McDonald are the only two guys that have started so far this year. There's three new offensive linemen in the line. And the center, Will Maddie, one of the captains of this team, making his 27th straight start. And again, two true freshmen and a redshirt freshman inserted into that offensive line for Indiana on third and eight. White Baker wanted to throw, now escapes. Running for midfield and gets shoved out of bounds. Very close to the marker. Critical mistake by the defensive right end of South Carolina, Tom. He's got to contain right Baker. You'll see him here. You watch, watch right Baker. He goes to his left, and the defensive end for South Carolina gets pinned in by the left tackle, tackle McDonald. That eight-yard run by the quarterback, right Baker, good enough for a first down in the football. Spotted just across midfield into South Carolina State Territory. Bulldogs are in the white, Hoosiers in the cream and crimson. Back to the crimson helmets this week after using the cream ones last week. Throw on the run is incomplete looking for Kofi Hughes. Now for the auto owners insurance starting defense for those Bulldogs from Orangeburg, South Carolina. And up front, Pat Washington already has a couple of sacks as an all-conference performer on that defensive line. The linebackers, Rick Donovan Richard, right in the middle, also an all-conference selection, had 93 tackles last year. And then Thompson and Ellis, those guys combining for four interceptions last week. And it was Dominique Ellis who had a 55-yard interception return for a touchdown late in the fourth quarter to seal that win against Bethune-Cookman. That was a great play, and that was a big win for the South Carolina State team after losing to Central Michigan the week before and knowing they had to come to Bloomington today. You're seeing Wright Baker get all the checks from the sideline. They line up in the formation. Wright Baker looks to the sideline. The sideline tells him what play to run, and then he runs that 50% on third down for the Hoosiers is tied for second best in the conference so far this year. White Baker slings it, has his man at the 30. Cody Latimer comes up with the catch. 16 yards and a first down for the Hoosiers. Fabulous by White Baker. I mean, he, he's got great poise. Look, look at him here. His eyes are downfield. He's looking the secondary off. Young quarterbacks have a tendency to stare down the receiver. Wright Baker did just the opposite on that play, made the free safety break away. Wright Baker with the pitch. This is Perez. Can't get out of the grasp of Darius Drummond. The wide receiver to the far side, to the right of the offensive side, blocked the wrong man. Otherwise, that would have been a good play. They had it set up. You can see Indiana's mixing up. They've thrown passes. They've run the sweep, and now they're running some option. They're trying to get the run game right away in this game. Big week for Perez last week against Virginia with a couple of touchdown rushes in that game that went right down to the final seconds where the Cavaliers got the winning field goal. White Baker looking to the end zone. Incomplete in the back of the end zone. And the officials say that Deweese Wilson did not have control. They are talking about it. And they waited to make the call, coach. They decide he was juggling the football. Absolutely. But what a great play call by the 
Indiana step. This is the second time they've run the play. The guy underneath is open, but they want to throw the ball over the South Carolina State's head. So they set this play up about four plays ago, going to the other way. Looks like he caught it, but didn't have maybe possession until he was out of bounds. Yeah, 15 is Mason Harris, who stuck his right arm in there and disrupted the play, and sure enough, incomplete. The, the matchup that favors Indiana is at the corners. Both safeties for South Carolina State. Ellis and Thompson. The previous play is under further review. The ruling on the field is an incomplete pass. He's, it looks like he has it. I, the question is, that left foot, or that's his right foot is down, whether he has control over it or not. So again, coach, the call on the field is incomplete, not having possession of the football. There must be indisputable video evidence. Right. Or they better be sure up top that he caught the ball. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it looks like that's going to be turned around. I, I think this is going to be turned around. Tom. We will see. You know, we had some interesting reviews or non-reviews. In last week's game against Virginia, we had a, a call on a safety that came back out. The safety was nullified, and That's we tough. also had a play on special teams where the ball may or may not have grazed the Virginia player. So again, overall, though, I mean, what a great addition to the game of college football to be able to use the technology. I was in the Big Ten meetings when this all started. I voted for it. I was coaching in Indiana. When you're coaching in Indiana, you want video replay. Because honestly, when there's a tough call and you're playing an elite team, that call may go the other way. This is going to be a completion. He clearly has control. His left foot is clearly inbounds. I say they overturn this. I say that's conclusive evidence by video. He even dragged his right foot as well, Coach. He yeah. got them both yeah. in there. He, he, he's it. He's, Just, a, he's absolutely it. And again, Tom, oh, what a great play call. I mean, Indiana had this thing set up. There was a, it was a three-level receiver route. There was a five-yard route, a 15-yard route, and a deep route. The 15-yard route was wide open, but they want to throw it downfield. That right. was a 30-yard pass play, Coach, if, in fact, it will stand. And right away, we can tell what Indiana wants to do. They want to run the ball, although... They haven't run it as much, but they're in a run formation. They're just audibly to the pass. And then we know that the matchup that favors Indiana is not beating the safeties of South Carolina. After a further review, the receiver controlled the pass in the end zone. Touchdown. Coach DiNardo all over that one. Six points for Indiana. And, and another, another vote for instant replay or for review. I, I mean, this is why this has been a great rule. The Big Ten has changed college football by implementing this, what was it, three, four, five years ago? I've, I've lost track of time. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> you know, it was interesting. Right after the play, you saw Deweese Wilson go right up to the official and claimed that he had control. Sure enough, the officials get together. They send it up for a review. They get it right. Six points on the board after the 30-yard touchdown play. Right Baker to Deweese Wilson. Yeah, they really weren't listening to Deweese, but anyway. <laughs> Ewald for the extra point. And he knocks it through. And the crowd up there above the goalpost gets to keep that football this year here at Memorial Stadium. Deweese Wilson, second TD grab of the season. Wilson's team on top. A 30-yard touchdown play for the Hoosiers here in the first quarter. Edward Wright, Baker to Deweese Wilson, 7-0. Hoosers just inside of 12 minutes to go here in the first quarter. Can't find your school's game? Go to btn.com slash game finder to see where you can find your game. Minnesota also in action opposite our game here in Bloomington. Coach Mason involved in the broadcast of Minnesota with Matt Devlin, the deep men Thompson and Simmons and Ewald will kick it away for Indiana. This one will bounce right near the goal line. And will be ruled a touchback. Okay, you can see uh, this is the second time they've run this play. So right Baker rolls to his left. You're going to see both receivers open. You're going to see the underneath receiver, the second receiver right there on the 20-yard line. He's wide open. But they've decided they want to throw the ball deep 
early in the game to back up the South Carolina State secondary. So sometimes, Tom, you don't always throw it to the open guy. You take a shot downfield. Coach, that drive, eight plays, 60 yards, just over three minutes to get on the scoreboard. It is the first possession for the Bulldogs from South Carolina State. And their first play produces about nine yards as Caleb Davis made the catch. Jarrell Drain pushed him out of bounds. Derek Wiley is the quarterback, the junior from Rockingham, North Carolina. Does have a TD pass to his credit. It came last week in that victory against Bethune Cookman, 26 to 18. Come from behind fashion last week for the Bulldogs. Here is Jordan. He is the featured back for this South Carolina State offense. And here is the starting offense. The backs and receivers Ashton Jordan the junior Somerville South Carolina five times in his career he has rushed for over 100 yards had five TDs last year up front the center is also the captain Tristan Bellamy from Johnston South Carolina first and ten Jordan runs into the line squirts forward for a couple of yards now time for the auto owners insurance defensive lineup and for the Indiana Hoosiers, Adam Replogel, Centerville, Ohio, making his 26th start on that defensive line for the Hoosiers. Now they'll have the three linebacker scheme with Murphy, Thomas, and Jones. Vanell Jones from St. Petersburg, Florida. And Murphy also into the starting lineup for this game. This is Wiley. Decides to tuck and run and gets swallowed under close to the 39-yard line. The secondary for the Hoosiers and coach talked about number 29 Chris Atkins 18 tackles on the season tied for sixth best from the conference tied with his teammate Jeff Thomas for the team lead had a career high 11 tackles first week of the year in the loss to Ball State and he'll be very active on first and 10 today they'll play much different coverage on first down than they will on second and third here is third down call it third and six from the shotgun Wiley gets rid of it incomplete at midfield Looking for McDonald, but it will be a punting situation for the Bulldogs. This is a huge stop for Indiana. That was a well-run route by number two. He tried to give him the stuttering go. Terrific play by Barnett. Erickson to punt it away. He will do the place kicking and the punting. He's a two-time All-American. And Mullen is the deep man. Number 22, Kenny Mullen. Freshman from Fort Wayne, Indiana. At the 18. 30. Spun down at the 41-yard line. Very well done by Indiana's punt return team. That play was a good play because Indiana's front line kept South Carolina State from releasing, releasing the line of scrimmage. S sets up the wall, number four gets a key block. Very well done. What you want from your punt return is a guy who, one, can catch the ball, and two, a guy who will run up the field, not towards the sideline. Dre Muhammad with a 23-yard return. Excellent field position for Indiana. Already leading 7-0 from its own 41-yard line. Short yardage on first down. Stephen Houston, sophomore from Little Rock, Arkansas. With his 10th carry of the season. I think you're going to see Kevin Wilson be a little more conservative here. He's going to Quick play is incomplete. Looking for Shane Wynn. And now a flag comes out at midfield. There's also one down by about the 36-yard line of South Carolina State. So two separate flags on the play. One of them, I'm guessing, is going to be between a receiver and a, and a defensive back. I'm not sure which one committed the foul, but that, that flag was thrown from the perimeter. Illegal substitution. Defense, number 29. 12th man didn't get off the field. Five-yard penalty. Second down. Mike Cannon is our referee. Buddy Pugh, head coach for South Carolina State. Indiana's clearly into their hurry up now. Now, again, there's two plays probably called now, a run play and a pass play. Edwards going to look to the sideline to see which one, which one to call. Second and short base down. Edward Wright Baker was four of five for 53 yards in that TD toss in the first drive. Wants to uncork another one. Deep and caught. DeWeese 
Chase Wilson inside the five. Second and short, and safeties are supported from inside. The safety should have been more conservative than that. Plus, he's got a bunch of time. There's no pass rush. Offensive line, the new offensive line by Indiana. Given 46 yards on that play, coach, first and goal. So that play was second and short. South Carolina State didn't need to support their safeties as aggressively as they did because it's a waste down. They threw the ball over their head. Offside, defense, number 97. Half the distance to the goal, first down. South Carolina has to settle down here. I, I mean, they, they just have to be a little bit careful with some of their defensive calls. They're letting Indiana's offense totally control the game. I formation. Perez is the red zone running guy. Towards the end zone and in. Steven Houston. First TD of the season for Houston as he slams it in from short yardage for Indiana. High formation, two tight ends. I mean, this is what Kevin Wilson wants his offense to look like. He wants to be able to line up in the spread. He wants to be able to line up in one back. He wants to be able to line up in the eye. Tom, he's already done all those formations and we're just starting the first quarter. So Houston caps it off for his head coach and another touchdown, Ewald for the extra point. Up and through. Deweese Wilson has two catches for 76 yards. A two-yard TD run to cap it off by Houston. And for Wilson, those 76 yards, a career high. Steven Houston, the sophomore, into the end zone. 14-0 Hoosiers. So your policy looks good. Is there anything else? Why'd you buy my husband a Falcon? Thanks for the Falcon. I didn't buy anyone a Falcon. Big. Body paint on sale in Bloomington this afternoon. The Hoosiers with a 14-0 lead over the visitors from South Carolina State. Off to a great start. And you want to check in the Big Ten Network on Wednesday. It's Big Ten football and beyond. And so far, Indiana's offense has gone above and beyond. A couple of TDs to take a 14-0 lead here at Memorial Stadium as Kevin Wilson chases his first career victory as the head man in Indiana. Absolutely. Now, you've got to get the defense ready to come out and stop South Carolina State again. Simmons. Simmons up across the 30-yard line. So that's where South Carolina will st start on offense. Now the big play setting up the most recent TD, Deweese Wilson from Edward Wright Baker, 46 yards, coach. Okay, now watch the safeties. As the play develops, you're going to see Edward Wright Baker, he fakes the run. The safeties come up. The time they bail out, it's too late. Freeze it. There's the safety right there. The ball's thrown right in the right spot. Only place that the good guys can catch it. So the safeties in that play, second and short time, they shouldn't have been as aggressive as they were. It was a very good play call by Indiana. 76 yards so far receiving for Deweese Wilson. That is a career high on just two catches. Wiley. McDonald. McDonald. McDonald to the 10. They will not catch him. All of a sudden, Wiley dumps it to McDonald, who goes 69 yards, and the Bulldogs are in the end zone. Jailbreak screen. When you see the replay, there won't be a defensive lineman block from Indiana. They snap the ball. South Carolina State lets everyone on the line of scrimmage come through. They throw it quickly before anybody can react. Great play call by South Carolina State. 69 yards on the play, coach. That is Tyler McDonald, the sophomore, second TD catch of the season for number two. And remember, going into the game, one of the goals of the Indiana defense, no big plays. That's obviously a big play. That also the first TD pass of the season for Derek Wiley here in the third week. Blake Erickson on for the extra point. And all of a sudden, it has gotten really quiet here at Memorial Stadium. It, it is. And, and the, the issue is they've got to put the South Carolina State right back out on the field. They've got to hold up. So 14-7 Indiana with the lead, but the Bulldogs get in the end zone. One play and a score. So with 9.03 to go in the first quarter, South Carolina State has gotten right back into this game 
McDonald, a 69-yard TD pass from his quarterback, Derek Wiley. Coach, keep in mind, this team only averages 66 yards through the air for the season. Yeah, they're almost at their average. Uh, <laughs> very well-executed screen. I, I mean, they had it set up, but still, the Indiana secondary keep the ball in front of them. Another short kick, bouncing around. That's a free ball, and Indiana covers it. Here's one prop South Carolina State has right now. For the last two weeks against Central Michigan and Bethune-Cookman, the defense has played most of the most of the day. And now you've got a South Carolina State defense that was on the field. Indiana drove the ball. Their offense goes out, and, and in one play, their offense scores. That's the good news. The bad news is the defense is back out on the field. They've run so much the first two games that the game preparation, the defensive coach of South Carolina State had to back off. Indiana football, swing pass. Latimer, first down, but a flag is out. Yeah, the flag was thrown by the back judge. It, it, it might be a block in the back or illegal. It will, yeah. You know, someone could have come from the outside of the field and blocked below the waist, which is a new rule this year. We'll have to see what the what the call is. Illegal low block. Offense, number 13. Half the distance to the goal. Repeat first down. New rule this year, Tom. If you're lined up outside the tackle box like that receiver was and you come and block inside and block below the waist, it's a penalty. A year ago, that's not a penalty. This year, it's a penalty if it was above the waist, which I believe it was. And you can see with that good starting field position, Coach, both times so far, Indiana has cashed it in with touchdowns. Absolutely. One more time now, Tom, the court, uh, right Baker backs out. He was a step from underneath. Houston with a rushing touchdown. Deweese Wilson with a receiving touchdown. Roberts try to move to the outside, but another flag is down as Joe Thomas, number 48, in white, making the play for South Carolina State. So again, a flag is down and the indication holding against the Hoosiers. Mike Cannon, our referee, trying to sort it out here. It's been a haywire first few minutes of this game. With 21 points, bunch of flags, big plays, and Buddy Pugh's team is in this, Coach. Yeah, and, and Buddy Pugh's team's getting a little bit of a rest right now on defense, and they needed that. And, and this is just the opposite of what... Holding. Holding. Offense, number 72. Half the distance to the goal. It remains first down. Indiana has given up the momentum, and more importantly, they've allowed the South Carolina State defense to get some rest. They can't play this sloppy on offense. So you mark the ball at about the seven yard line for Indiana. First and 26 for the Hoosiers as the clock continues to roll. D'Angelo Roberts gets tripped up on the rushing play and it's time to go to Dave Refson in the studio for the Discover Card Game Break. Tom, thanks. Wisconsin getting a battle early from Northern Illinois after a Nick Toon touchdown. Jasmine Hopkins answers for the Huskies at 7-7 at Soldier Field. Thank you, Dave. Back to live action here at Memorial Stadium. A little bit of trickery, and it's Cody Latimer with the ball as he tries to rough his way up to the 20-yard line. You know, Tom, those coaches, they, they carry those cards around on the sidelines with play selection. <laughs> There's not a big selection on first and 25 and second and 20. <laughs> I like this, though, Coach, a little misdirection. Yeah, it's a little risky. I, I mean, if he would have got tackled for the loss, it would have been on the three-yard line. But on the other hand, the defense wasn't expected, but it was well played by South Carolina State, especially the right corner. And they got 10 yards out of the play. Brings up third and 14. As we approach seven and a half minutes to go in the first quarter. 14 to seven Hoosiers. Three for two so far on third down. Another home run ball deep and deflected and broken up. The intended receiver was Cody Latimer. Darius Drummond, number 30, had the defense. South Carolina State brought five rushes, three, uh, four down linemen and a linebacker. A little surprised they put their secondary. Yeah, well, well done by uh, 30. That would be Drummond in the Drummond. secondary. Well done by Drummond. So Hines will punt it away for Indiana. Drummond, who just made that play defensively, is back deep with his teammate, Stephen Murphy. 
who received the punt. They both stand at their 36 37 yard line. This takes a hop at the 48. Covered at midfield. Indiana wants the football. The officials do not agree. No, it, it touched the Indiana play. I think the Indiana play I thought maybe it touched the South Carolina State play. Good field position for South Carolina State. Great job of the South Carolina State defense getting off the field. They were helped quite a bit by Indiana sloppy play and penalties. Remember the theme now for the South Carolina State offense. The ruling on the field was that the kick hit the kicking team. Receiver's ball, first down. So let's go back to the fundamentals, Tom. South, Car South Carolina State has to get four or more yards up first and ten. Here's now I think you'll see, Tom, that this ball is touched by an Indiana player, not a South Carolina State player. First and ten from the 49 for South Carolina State. Wiley still has it. And Wiley is brought down. What pursuit. Jeff Thomas had him in the crosshairs and made sure that Wiley didn't escape. We talked about it in the open. I, I mean, this is what Thomas brings. Watch. This is about the same play we watched before the show started. Great pursuit. He gets outside and brings Wiley down. So it's Thomas and then Jones came in to help Thomas finish off the play. But Jeff Thomas with the pursuit and the tackle. And now the Bulldogs take it into Indiana territory, but short yardage on second down. The problems start for South Carolina State on first and ten. If they're going to be first and ten and second and eight, they're not going to have much chance to win this game. So South Carolina State has to stay on schedule. Right now, it's about 50%. When they do stay on schedule, they have a much better chance of winning the game. Third down. Incomplete looking to the near side. The coverage was there from Donnell Jones. The coverage was there, and it was pressure as well. They brought the far side corner and the, the outside linebacker. Well done by Indiana. Erickson comes in for the punt for South Carolina State. Deep man, Dre Muhammad. <laughs> Ball trickles out of bounds at about the 18 yard line. South Carolina State out of the MEAC. Some famous football names have come out of the program. Buddy Pugh took over for the legend Willie Jeffries at the bottom of that list. How about baseball too? Willie Akins, Harry Carson, the National Football League, Deacon Jones. And even a political spin on things as well with James Clyburn, the congressman, <laughs> the distinguished gentleman. First and ten, the quick pass to the sideline, and that's another grab for Deweese Wilson. And another pass on first and ten. I'm a little surprised Indiana's throwing the ball as much as they are in first and ten. I thought they were trying to establish the run game more. But again, this is a run pass audible. Here we see White Baker throwing to Deweese Wilson. Balls on the outside arm as it should be. Right up the middle with Perez. The red shirt freshman goes 5'11, 230 pounds from Park Ridge, Illinois. Really good player. And, and he's a guy who has settled down that run game uh, for Indiana from the tailback position. Indiana averaging 125 and a half yards rushing for the season. Good game against Virginia for Perez. 13 carries, 47 yards, and a couple of touchdowns. And what a spectacular football game we had last week despite the outcome right down to the final seconds as Indiana scored 28 straight points. Edward Wright Baker on third down hits his man near the 30 yard line. That is Shane win number one. Really really terrific effort by Wright Baker and, and it was a better job of containing by South Carolina State but Wright Baker outran the contain. So I, I, I think what you see here is that South Carolina is making the adjustment. Seven yards and a first down of the previous play. Now up close to the 40. Just a little shy of the 40 for Shane Wynn. He gets the call again. I'm going to tell you what. You blink and you miss a play. <laughs> with the Indiana up tempo. <laughs> again, this South Carolina State defense has been on the field a ton the last two weeks. They've got to stop them on the third down to give themselves a chance. Second is short. Last time it was a, it was a big play. Wynn slippery at 5-7. Right, Baker. 
up to the 45, elusive also. And he's got another first down. Coach, you got to keep up with these guys. Yeah, absolutely. And good job moving the chain. They tried to throw it deep again. You can see, watch Ryan Baker here. He's looking to his left, trying to throw it deep. Does a great play. You not only have to contain Ryan Baker if you're South Carolina State, you have to have a rusher in every lane because he'll take the middle as quick as he'll take the outside loss of contain. Six yards on the play for Edward Wright Baker on the run. Right, right up the middle, Ooh. Perez, but there is the wide receiver. Stoppage. Your wide receiver. They're in an unbalanced formation. The wide receiver to the press box side, to our side, to the offensive left. All start. Offense number 88. Five-yard penalty. First down. It's a different formation. Sometimes the wide receivers have have quite a bit to learn. It was an unbalanced line, something they don't do very often. Probably caught Belcher off guard. Same senior, formation. Senior from Fort Wayne, Indiana. And again, there is a flag on the field and a whistle. False start. Offense, number 76. Five-yard penalty. Remains first down. Yeah, absolutely. We've got some young guys in there. That was, uh, now that was Evers, coach. He's also a redshirt freshman. He's a redshirt freshman. And in this offensive line, a redshirt freshman is about a middle-aged guy. <laughs> Couple of true freshmen involved in that offensive line. A lot of changes up front. We approach four minutes to go here in the first quarter. First and 20. Some interesting first down situations for Indiana. They're running on first down with Matt Perez. And right now, let's go to Dave Resson in the studio for the Scotland Card game break. Okay, Tom, check it in on that game between Wisconsin on top 14-7. Thank you, Dave. Right back to action here. A seven-point advantage for the Hoosiers on second down and 17. Catch made at the 40-yard line. Dre Mohammed. Very well executed. It was a, it was a flash, uh, flash route by Mohammed. Here again, good protection. Right Baker sits in there, impressive that Right Baker sat in there because it was a little bit fresh in his face. 33 yards on that play and a first down. We play action. Running to his right, throwing with his left, and hitting Belcher down by the 25 yard line. Same route concept is on the score. It's a three level route. There's a deep, a middle, and an underneath. Right Baker throws it to the middle receiver right here. Man, he looks like he's got great poise. Puts it right on the money. 15 yards on that play. Just a moment ago, it was first and 20, and now Indiana approaches the red zone. Very close to getting in there as Edward Wright Baker connects on another pass. This one to Ted Bolzer, sophomore from Cincinnati. The play selection is really perfect for a young quarterback. Watch, watch this. It's a fake on the decide play. He comes out and just tosses it to an easy pass to the, court, the tight end underneath. Timeout, South Carolina. Timeout, South Carolina State. That's their first charge timeout. Indiana already one for one in the red zone with a Stephen Houston touchdown. Deweese Wilson also with a TD grab in this first quarter. AT&T and Verizon charge you extra for going over two gigabytes of seven Hoosiers as they enter the red zone for the second time in the game. Timeout well spent. You know, traditionally, football coaches only call timeouts, but if, it, if it's a strategic move, this is a, what I call a basketball timeout. But give my guys a chance to rest, get them over to the sideline, because they have no chance to stop this Indiana offense unless they have their legs underneath them. Again, the teams have never met in football, but you mentioned basketball, coach. They played right across the way here in Bloomington at Assembly Hall back in December. Pass complete. Williams. Correction, Roberts, the Angelo Roberts on the swing pass. That was the 25th play for the South Carolina State defense. Indiana's defense has played nine. At this rate, there's going to be 100 plays for that South Carolina State defense. They played 90 the last two weeks. You shouldn't play more than 70 in a regular game. And this defense last year, one of the most highly ranked in the football championship subdivision for this defense. This year, also pretty good. They are second in points allowed. In the conference, they only allow 19 and a half per game. They come in with a one and one record, but it's Indiana threatening here at another first down for the Hoosiers. Yeah, Kevin Wilson will probably go for the end zone here. He's got him a little bit off balance. I mean, if you're South Carolina State right now, Kevin Wilson is, is has mixed up the play selection so much that it's hard to tell. Top of the receiver. 
Perez slides inside the 10 yard line. So Perez down to the seven. Again, Perez is their guy. He's, he's scored before this game, he scored three of the four red zone touchdowns. Leads the team with his three touchdown runs this season. Edward Wright Baker, 12 of 14, 163 yards and a touchdown. And that long pass to Wilson of 46 yards. 143 to go in the first. Tonight, it's a Big Ten Pac-12 showdown under the lights when Nathan Shieldhouse and the Illini battle Arizona State. Tonight in HD, only on BTN. The will, the fire, the passion. Every Sunday, these Big Ten athletes put everything they have towards one goal, victory. The Sunday Sports Showcase begins at noon Eastern on BTN. Indiana up 14 to 7. Edward Wright Baker has already thrown for 163 yards and a touchdown pass to Deweese Wilson. We knew Edward Wright Baker would, would manage the game, but we thought today he might make some more plays. I don't think there's any question that what he's doing today is making more plays, not just managing the game. What's impressive to me, Tom, is his poise when he's in the pocket and there's people in his in his face. This is a great example of the, the quarterbacks these days. If you not only have to contain them, by contain, I mean you have to have two people outside of them on both sides. You also have to have rushes up the middle, otherwise they're going to take it just like Wright Baker took that last play. And he's got three carries for 17 yards. The ball is spotted at the South Carolina State seven yard line. This will be tough for this South Carolina State. Defense. This is four down territory. I wouldn't imagine it that Kevin will do anything but try to score a touchdown, even if it's a, a third or fourth down. I don't. I don't think that their strategy here is to try to get through. So we may see him pound him on this play by formation. It's either going to be the fade route to uh, Belcher on the left sideline, or they're going to pound him with the eye. Belcher is at the bottom of your screen. Perez got away from one man, but then Christian Thompson came up and made the play. He's one of the leading tacklers on this team. 15 and a half coming into the game coach. And Chris Thompson's a safety, and he's on the line of scrimmage. There's a couple reasons. By formation and by field position, you could have expected him to be on the line of scrimmage. Indiana dominating that time of possession. They can get a first down. It is third down here, third and five. They can get a first down at the two-yard line. I'd expect some pressure from South Carolina State. Four receivers set for Indiana. To the end zone. Incomplete. Deweese Wilson, though, interfered with by Mason Harris. Yeah, and there was really no reason for Harris to, to put his hands on him. He had a defend. I, the ball, the wide receiver for Indiana was out of territory. Pass interference. Defense, number two. Penalty occurred in the end zone. Ball placed at the two-yard line. Automatic first down. Okay, Harris has got good position, but he has to turn and look for the ball. He can't Correction. keep his eyes on That penalty was on 15. Yeah, we, we can see 15 right in the middle of the screen. It was not number two. It was Darius Drummond who committed the infraction. So it's first and goal now for the Hoosiers. High formation. Perez spins off a tackle, gets close to the goal line. It'll be interesting to see what the next formation is. If, if Kevin wants to make a point, continue to pound the ball. We'll, we'll, we'll see them stay in this personnel grouping, and we'll probably see him give it to Perez again. This is Perez, and into the end zone for the Hoosiers. He's the red zone back. Three out of four coming into the game. Three out of four red zone touchdowns were given to Perez. A one-yard touchdown run for Matt Perez, the redshirt freshman. And his fourth touchdown carry of the season as he takes it in for Indiana. You know, when we visited with Kevin Wilson yesterday, we said that they were going to do some gap blocking, angle blocking. And that was a perfect example. From the tight end all the way to the center, everyone blocked to their inside, and they wrapped around the guard to kick out. Mitch Ewald, extra point. 33 seconds to go in the first quarter. Ewald, who is perfect in his career 
in extra points. Timeout at Memorial Stadium, 21-7. Hoosiers on top of the Bulldogs. When anybody in America calls Quicken Loans for a free home loan review, we'll offer them a free Android smartphone. But how are you going to get these phones to our clients coast to coast? It's going to take a little magic. I'm on it. Straight from Motown to you, America. Hit it. Yes. Helping people. Amaze. 33 seconds to go in the first quarter. It has been fast. It has been furious. 28 points put on the board. 21 of them belong to the Hoosiers as Perez finished off that last drive. And it's, it's been fast and furious for the Indiana offense, but not so much fun for the South Carolina State defense. You know the difference time between the offense playing a lot of plays and the defense playing a lot of plays? When I'm an offensive player and I'm playing a lot of plays, I'm having fun. When I'm a defensive player and I'm playing a lot of plays, I'm not having any fun. And my morale starts to sink. It's absolutely psychological. And that drive was 15 plays and 82 yards for Indiana with Perez slamming it in for the touchdown. Up close to the 30-yard line on the return by Jalen Simmons as we check in with Stacy Bates. Hey, Tom, you know, we were barely a few minutes into this contest, and Deweese Wilson was already working a big day. And when you think of receivers, it's easy to attach a stereotype of trash talker to that position, but that is not the case with Deweese. His teammates will tell you, and he'll admit to it, he's pretty soft-spoken. That's actually because he grew up not talking very much. His core of his family communicate in sign language. Both parents and two sisters are deaf. His older sister, like Deweese, though, is hearing, and Deweese jokes and says, well, she's always done most of the talking. Thank you, Stacy. A good contingent from the Wilson family on hand to watch Deweese, who has had a spectacular game so far. In fact, he has his career high in yardage already and a TD grab. You know, that was a huge play for South Carolina State. They gained five yards. There was 33 seconds for the first quarter. They need to give their defense a rest. And now when they come back after the after the break, after the break, they got a second and five situation. But they do trail 21 to 7. Indiana, a couple of rushing touchdowns from Houston and Perez. And Deweese Wilson with a touchdown grab as well at a career day so far for number 81. Got the foot down in the back of the end zone. And the Hoosiers lead the Bulldogs 21-7. Are the State Farm Post Game Show after the game on BTN. We get set to start the second quarter. Tom Wormy, Jerry DiNardo, Stacy Pates with you here in Bloomington, Indiana and Memorial Stadium in a 21-7 advantage for the Hoosiers. You want to go to iuhoosiers.com and get all your sports and information Hoosier athletics right now the focus on football and the Hoosiers have responded four possessions in the first quarter resulting in three touchdowns South Carolina State in the white has the ball McDonald makes the catch for the Bulldogs you can you can see this drive right here it's it's third real short this is a critical third down because look at the ball control I, I mean South Carolina State doesn't give themselves a chance to win the game unless they start converting some first downs and this is a good third and short to convert 0 for 2 so far on third down looks like the Bulldogs will pick this one up As the running back Chris Merrill puts his head down and gets it for the Bulldogs. This drive started with South Carolina State gaining five yards in first and ten. Remember, one of the keys to the game was to stay on schedule. Let's see what South Carolina State does. They try to gain four or more yards to keep this drive alive. South Carolina State scoring its points on a 69-yard pass completion from Wiley to McDonald. And for Indiana, a couple of rushing TDs and a Deweese Wilson 30-yard catch in the back of the end zone for the passing TD for the Hoosiers. Okay, so this is the time of the game when your offensive play call starts changing things up. It's second and ten, you think it through your pass, you might see a draw. Next first and ten, you might see a pass. So now you're trying to break tendencies as a play caller. Offensive coordinator for South Carolina State is Kevin McGrook. Little swing. Merrill. Forced out of bounds by a couple of Hoosiers. Yeah, good pursuit by, by Indiana and a good play call. Again, second and ten pass situation, but South Carolina State goes and, and runs a pitch out. Yeah, this is one of their base plays. Very well done on the pursuit by Indiana. There's Thomas again. Now let's see if Indiana pressures or if they cover. I think they're going to pressure and see if they can complete. Drain made the previous play. Let's see what happens here. 
over the middle and complete. Inside the 40, that's the number 82, Caleb Davis. Donnell Jones took him down, but the chains are going to move for South Carolina State. And Indiana decided to cover him. You can see it's only a four-man rush. So this is this is well done by South Carolina State. The next third, medium third long, expect Indiana to blitz. 11 yards on that play for Derek Wiley. He wants to crank it up again before he can do so. Flags are on the field. Okay, again, think like an offensive coordinator. Last, first, last two first and tens by South Carolina State, they ran the ball. False start, offense, number 14. Five yard penalty, first down. This last down, if they got the penalty on, they were in empty backs or one back, and, they, and they're trying to throw the ball. Buddy Pugh on that South Carolina sideline in his 10th season. The former math teacher. And his ball carrier stacked up. In fact, a helmet loose in the middle of that pile somewhere. There's Larry Black Jr., number 97, the junior from Cincinnati, 305 pounds and six foot three. All right, we're second and 14. Let, let, let's take like a defensive coordinator now. I, I think you're going to see. Uh, Coach Mallory, the defensive court coordinator, brings some pressure. I don't think they're going to let South Carolina just throw the ball and pick them apart. Second and 15. Wiley has the time, and he has his man inside the 30. Tyler McDonald, who has the touchdown grab, makes the catch. Good enough for a first down for the Bulldogs. Well, Indiana decides to cover here. I, I, I'll say this. This will be the last time they decide to cover when, when South Carolina's got long yards. From now on, South Carolina State's going to get the blitz every time, guaranteed. 17 yards on that play. Quick little handoff. Davis forced out of bounds as we head to Chicago. And Dave Revson at the studio for a discovered card game break. Tom, Minnesota. Good offensive down, Tom. Second and medium. South Carolina State's in the red zone. They can do whatever they want. My guess is that uh, Indiana will play a little bit conservative on this down. Second and five as we roll under 12 minutes to go in the quarter. Merrill, flag on the field. I think the defense, the nose guard jumped off for Indiana. I think it was Larry Black Jr. maybe. You saw Adkins come up to make the play, but again, there is a flag. Devin Wilson. A little bit excited on that Indiana sideline on the sunny side of the street here at Memorial Stadium. Yeah, let's see if uh, it's offside defense. Five yard penalty. Remains second down. Yep. Right in front of the ball. Defensive line coaches, they're famous for the meeting, say, how could you go offside? You're right in front of the ball. <laughs> I think they'll hear that a couple times this week. I played offense. <laughs> Merrill again. The ball came out. That ball came out of the carry by Merrill. It will be Hoosier football. Second and short. They go from a great situation to disaster. Great pursuit by Indiana's defense. All the people around the football. It's one thing for your opponent to fumble. It's another one to recover. Watch. Okay. This is very well done. Look at all the red shirts. The, the, the coaching point here is you take, you try to pick the ball up once and run it. If you can't pick it up the first time, don't try to keep picking it up. Very well done. Scoop and score. But if you can't get it the first time, just fall on it. That is Mick Menser. He comes up with the fumble recovery. Indiana forcing four turnovers against Virginia last week. That included two interceptions by Greg Heben. Stephen Houston has a touchdown to his credit in the game. With the carry up close to the 30-yard line. Five yards on the carry by Stephen Houston, the sophomore. Indiana lined up in the pistol that time. Pistol formation is the quarterback about five yards in a shotgun with the tailback directly behind him. This is more of a spread. Quick look for Indiana. That complete, Deweese Wilson, upended by Darius Drummond, who had to leave the game earlier. He has now returned for South Carolina State. Again, Tom, all these swing passes that we're seeing, they aren't called swing passes at the line of scrimmage. It's either or, but the way South Carolina State's lining up, the swing pass is the play they want. It was third and short. Call it third and two for the Hoosiers. 
You approach 11 minutes to go in the second quarter. 21-7 lead for Indiana. All of the scoring occurring in the first quarter. From the 32. They would write Baker out of the pocket and good enough for a first down as he runs out of bounds at the 38-yard line. But the way he got out of bounds is he went straight ahead first. Once again, South Carolina State's not keeping lane discipline by their interior people. They're containing Baker now, but you know what? It's too much contained. They need someone up the middle, Tom. <laughs> Seven yards on the rush by Edward Wright Baker, who is playing with poise and composure at the controls for the Hoosier offense. This time he decides to hand off, and there may be a loss on the play. As the carry by Steven Houston results in negative yardage. You know, Wright Baker's is doing exactly what you said, Tom. I mean, he, he really is. He's playing with great confidence. He's poised. He has the body language of a veteran. Uh, this is a huge game for Wright Baker's throw. Here's the pistol. Short shotgun tailback right behind him. Second and long. Handoff. Houston. Houston gained the 40-yard line. Again, sec second and long. Again, run, they, they ran the ball. So you have offensive coordinators changing up their tendency as the games go on because the defensive coaches are charting the plays as the game's being played. For Indiana, it's a co-offensive coordinator situation with Rod Smith and Kevin Johns. Kevin Johns kind enough to give us some of his time yesterday as we met with the coaching staff looking for that first W of the season. Three man front by South Carolina State, expecting pass. Third down, complete. Midfield and a first down. Just very well executed by Indiana offense. A bullet to Jay McCants. The freshman from Cincinnati has his first grab of the season for eight yards, and the sticks are moving on for the Hoosiers. A absolutely. Look, again, look at right Baker. Good protection, throws it right in. Some misdirection. Kofi Hughes ends up with the football. Hughes has some room, gets to the 20, and stumbles down inside the 15. Great first down call. Absolutely great first down call. It's the perfect time after two or three first downs to do a deep pass, to do a reverse. Watch the pursuit of South Carolina State. Very well executed by Indiana. Kofi should have that ball on the outside arm, not the inside arm. We'll get him after the game. Very well done. 38 yards on that play for Indiana. Back into the red zone on first down. And it was D'Angelo Roberts who shed the first tackle that then got taken down by Dominique Ellis, one of the captains of this South Carolina State team. And D'Angelo Roberts is the future of the tailbacks at Indiana. He's one of the most talented Time out, Indiana. That's their first timeout. This will be a full media timeout. So the Hoosiers take a timeout. We will too. 21 7 Hoosiers. Indiana back in the big. Indiana back in the red zone with the ball spotted at the 15 yard line of South Carolina State. Hoosiers two for two with a couple of rushing TDs. In their trips to the red zone in this game here in the second quarter 849 to go passes incomplete and whistle dead D'Angelo Roberts was the intended receiver and that is what Edward Wright Baker has done spread the wealth Deweese Wilson and DeMarlo Belcher leading the way with three catches apiece Wilson with a TD grab yeah, and he may get another one here because Wilson uh, coach Wilson's going to throw it in the end zone here there's no reason to go for the first down throw it in the end zone if you don't make a field goal so it's touchdown or field goal you're not trying to get the first down with this play call eight receivers used in total for Edward Wright Baker sophomore from Jeffersonville Indiana this now third and 11. The Hoosiers can get a first down at the four yard line. Four wide receiver set. Pressure coming. He escapes, throws. Belcher at the five, trying to work his way, but he's held short of the first down. Okay, the design of the play was to go to the end zone. Baker did a good job eluding pressure, and now they just threw a short pass and they'll kick the field goal. But the play call was to throw it in the end zone, which is exactly what it should be. That's the second time Baker's seen that exact rush. The left guard and the left tackle for Indiana have to solve that twist. They're twisting the defensive lineman over the right guard all the way around the center. The offensive line's got to get on the sidelines and solve that because it's hurting Indiana. 
So a field goal attempt by Mitch Ewald. From about 27 yards away. We'll call it 26 officially for Ewald. Three of four on the season. And he knocks another one through. So the sophomore kicker puts three more points on the board for Kevin Wilson. The Hoosiers with a 24-7 lead. What if performance was matched by efficiency? What if electricity? Hoosiers on top of South Carolina State 24 7 here in the second quarter. Coming up tonight in prime time, the Fighting Illini 2 0 on the season. They will battle 18th ranked Arizona State under the lights in a Pac 12 Big Ten showdown, 7 p.m. Eastern, only on BTN. Big game atmosphere tonight in Champaign, Tom. I, this, this Illinois team, from the day we watched them practice in camp, Howard Griffith, myself, and Dave Revson came away saying this is a really good football team that not a lot of people know about. If they win that game tonight, they'll be ranked on Monday morning. We had a big time atmosphere here in Indiana last week when Virginia came to town. 34 31, the final, which is coming up just short in that one last week. Simmons. Simmons across the 25 as we go down to Stacy Faith joined by a very special guest. Very special indeed. In 1987, Coach Bill Mallory became the first coach in the Big Ten to earn back-to-back -back Big Ten Coach of the Year honors. In what ways have you seen or at what rate have you seen the Big Ten Conference grow and develop since you even coached? Well, again, I think it just uh, has gotten better through the years. Uh, now with Nebraska involved, certainly makes it a, even more of a quality conference, but it's even back when I was here, it was the Big Ten and uh, a lot of good football in the Big Ten back then as there is today. And how about the family keeping it going at IU? Your son up in the booth. Talk uh, about uh, his growth in this program so well, far. Uh, Doug was with me my last three years when I was then the head football coach here. And it's just great to have he and the family back and the, the three uh, grand girls and we enjoy them, both my wife and I. Before you went on to become the winningest coach in Hoosier history, you also had to suffer through a few losses. Describe how you keep fans and players excited. These guys look like they might pull one out today, but they're working two straight losses. Well, again, I think uh, it's just a matter of them staying focused. They're working hard. And Kevin's a, a very uh, positive and focused uh, head coach, and that's what you need to do. I think that when things maybe come up short like they did last week, you've got to uh, look and see where do we have to correct ourselves. There was a lot of good play there, but some things that they have to improve on, and they just need to, you know, build from there. I, I like the attitude of the players. And, uh, I just feel good about uh, where they're going to go with the program. Now, what's the biggest difference you see? You talk about the attitude of the players. What's the biggest difference you're seeing? And what's that again? In the, in the attitude of the players you just mentioned, what's the main thing you're seeing? Well, I think they're uh, very determined to really want to make the program a winner, you know, and there's no reason why it can't be a winner here. And, uh, I had the greatest respect for Bill Lynch. Bill uh, was so close and maybe just not quite, uh, but he still, he was right in there and very, very competitive. And I think he's left a good uh, core of uh, players here. And it's just a matter of them continuing to do the things it takes to build themselves into a, a good, consistent weight and winning program. Bill Mallory will always be a Hoosier. Thank you for your time. Enjoy the rest of the game. Thank you. Appreciate it. Guys. Thank you, Stacy. Coach Mallory, 69 wins. That is the most in school history. The Buick Human Highlight Reel celebrates former NCAA athletes doing great things in the community. Let's take a look at one of those stories now. Alan Page is a role model from his football history. The Minnesota Vikings, the University of Notre Dame, to the bench. The first African-American Supreme Court justice in Minnesota. He was a legend. I don't know that anybody could do what he's done and be as humble as he is. If I can reach 20 children. Hoosiers up 24-7 here in Bloomington. Here in the second quarter, Edward Wright Baker, 15 of 18 coach, 180 yards and a TD toss. All right, watch this. His eyes look left, and then he throws it to his right. Point number one. Point number two, he stares down the receiver here, but he'll get better at that. Point number three, watch him stay in the pocket as South Carolina State twists around, cuts number 97 loose, and in the face of pressure, Wright Baker sits right in there and throws it. Really well done, all three plays. The touchdown pass for Edward Wright Baker 
was the first scoring play of the game in the first quarter for Indiana. On their first drive, he hit Deweese Wilson back of the end zone 30 yards. And for Wright Baker, his third TD toss of the season. Very productive thus far for the Hoosiers. Back in the pistol. Get the ball back here as we approach six minutes to go in the second quarter. Again, uh, you know, Baker's mixing it up. That that was the pistol. They put him in different formations, second, second and medium. Uh, they may try to go for a big one here with Baker. Baker gets away from the pressure, looking for a seam, makes a nice move and stumbles up close to the 40. Courtney Ingram brought him down for South Carolina State. Yeah, terrific play by terrific play by Baker. I mean, he gets himself out of this. Long term, though, here's what has to happen. Indiana has to protect Baker better, Tom, and Indiana has to run the ball back. I mean, they're going to get away with this today, but big picture, Baker's bailing him out too much. Six yards and a first down for Edward Wright Baker. Perez puts his head down right into the middle of the pile at the 40-yard line. You know, Wright Baker coming into this game, coach, second in the conference in passing yards per game, 221. He was only a half yard behind Russell Wilson, so maybe we saw this performance coming from number seven. Well, he certainly has developed each game. Perez on the run here. Perez, first down yardage close to midfield, but there is a flag on the play as Christian Thompson made the tackle. My guess from where it was thrown was the tight end lined up on the left side of the offensive line, holding the outside back. Holding offense, number 72. Ten-yard penalty, still second down. I was wrong, it was the tackle, not the tight end. That's Andrew McDonald on the offensive line. Yeah, you can see McDonald's fit in. What you can't see is if he doesn't let go of him. I mean, everyone's holding for a little bit, Tom. You just got to go when you let go. <laughs> no. Coach Donato, I know you didn't hold, but you were an offensive lineman at Notre Dame part of that 1973 national championship. I was team. never caught, Tom. I was never caught. <laughs> That's more important than that door. Baker changing the play at the last minute again. The savvy of a native New Yorker <laughs> playing for the Irish. Timeout, Indiana. That's their second timeout. So the Hoosiers take their second timeout of the half. 4.35 to go, 24-7. Hoosiers with the lead over the Bulldogs. It's faster. Four minutes, 35 seconds to go in the second quarter. The Hoosiers on top of South Carolina State out of the MEAC. 24-7 to seven of the first ever meeting between these two teams. You want to stay tuned for the Buffalo Wild Wings halftime report. Scores and highlights from today's games, action in and around the Big Ten. Dave Repson, Tony Banks, and Howard Griffith. We are lucky enough to have Coach Jerry DiNardo with us on site, on location here in Bloomington, Indiana. And a flag comes out. Offensive lineman may have jumped a little bit. False start. Offense, number 72. Five yard penalty, second down. Let's say they'll have something to discuss at halftime. <laughs> Is it a safe assumption? The gear is always working in the mind of head coach Kevin Wilson. Looks like a duck, real calm on the outside, paddle like <laughs> half underneath. <laughs> Already over 300 yards in the half for Indiana. Kofi Hughes makes the catch, tries to turn upfield, but is stopped at the 26 yard line. Jailbreak screen, great call in that situation. Throw it out to the flank, get your offensive lineman running downfield, and see if you can break one. It didn't work, but it was a great call. Point of discussion at halftime might be the penalties, coach, for the Hoosiers. Eight penalties for 56 yards in the first half. We may hear the discussion from here. <laughs> <laughs> from the shotgun. Stepping up and throwing. And just beyond his intended receiver, Deweese Wilson. Maybe the first bad decision Wright Baker made. It's third and a ton. You, you're most likely not going to scramble out of, out of this situation. Now, here's Deweese Wilson, okay? Good route. He's not open. Now he shakes open. 
and he's got to lead him a little bit. He let, let him a little bit too much. But my, my point being is that right Baker should have threw that downfield. He's not going to scramble in most cases for third and 15. It's great growth. He'll watch the video, and he'll get better. Pines to punt for Indiana. The deep man is Drummond, number 30 at his own 35-yard line. Who averages over 37 yards per punt on the 39? Drummond. Hines is the only man back. Drummond to the 10, to the end zone. But there is a flag back at the 40 of South Carolina State. Drummond took it back 61 yards, beat the kicker to get there, but there is a flag. Nine out of ten flags on this play is a block in the back. Now, I didn't see it, but most of the time when you're on the sidelines and it's your punt return team. On the return, illegal block in the back. Receiving team, number 12, 10 yards from the spot of the foul, first down. And you have to teach it that way, Tom. When you install the punt return, you tell your team, I guarantee if you don't pay special attention to it, there's going to be a block in the back. Let's see if we can see it. They flagged Thomas Williams, number 12, for it, Coach. Yeah, I, I, I can't see it on, on, on the replay. I'm sure it's there. But you have to coach that play different than you coach any other play. You, you've got to pay close attention to blocking in the back. Buddy Pugh, second most wins in school history with 77. Behind the legendary Willie Jeffries, for whom he took over in 2002. That's Wiley who kept it and ran out of bounds in front of his own bench, forced out by Jarrell Drain. BTN gives you your football fix every weeknight starting at 7. We bring you all things Big Ten football, game breakdown, rising stars, analysis, and much more. Get your football fix on BTN, the home of Big Ten football, every night. Okay, strategically now there's 330 left. Indiana can't be passive on defense. You're going to see them pressure. The last thing they want is South Carolina State going in the halftime of the score. To the air for Wiley. Completes the pass, and that's McDonald. Yeah, uh, Indiana's got a snug up on their coverage. They can't, they can't cut guys loose. Let's look at the replay here. This is well done by Wiley, sitting in the pocket. Nice throw, very nice. You've got to tighten up that coverage by even even's got to be a little tighter he's got to understand the situation 23 yards of that pass play from Wiley to McDonald who does have a touchdown catch in the game for South Carolina State it's only points a 69 yard connection with Wiley okay again South Carolina State now second and long it's four down territory so Coach Pugh's probably telling the offensive coaches, you have four downs. We're going to try to get seven points before we go in. I don't want to kick a field off. That'll change the way that the coordinator calls the plays. Second and nine. Flag is out. Wiley has a man near the goal line incomplete. Again, there is a flag on the play. It's going to be holding on the left corner. It was an out and up. One of the things, the only thing a corner can do sometimes is the penalty. To, to hold the guy to stop the touchdown. Now McDonald was the intended receiver on the play. Again, a flag down. Might be even. Illegal formation. Five men in the backfield. Five yard penalty. Remains second down. Formation. So one of the receivers was off the line of scrimmage, should have been on the, uh, on the line of scrimmage. I thought maybe even had held on the out and up. Six penalties now against South Carolina State. And that'll bring up second and 14. Two and a half minutes to go in the second quarter. 24-7. Wiley over the middle and complete. And let's check in with Stacy. Guys, this is one of those situations where Buddy Pugh has told his guys, and he told them this last week, and it led to an exhilarating comeback. He says, listen, just hang in there. Don't go crazy. Let the play come to you. Make things happen, but let it come to you. It worked last week, and that was it. He said that epic com comeback was largely due to the fact that his guys just relaxed and did what they can do. And that comeback that Stacy is referencing was against Bethune-Cookman last week. That was their only conference loss a year ago, and they come back to beat them this year on the road in Daytona Beach, Florida, as that pass falls incomplete. Yeah, and, and, and Stacy hit it right on the head. That is exactly what, what Coach Pugh is telling his team, and that's exactly the right strategy. Notice Indiana's coverage has gotten a lot tighter. When this drive, drive, drive started, 
they were backed off the receivers. The last three or four plays, Indiana has snugged up on their coverage, and that's why South Carolina State's punted. And that was Mark Murphy defensively for Indiana on Julius Pendergrass, number 21. So there's Muhammad waiting for the punt at his own 10-yard line. Punt coming from Blake Erickson, the two-time all-conference kicker and punter. The South Carolina State Bulldogs. Muhammad, fair catch, five-yard line. Tough play. You know, you really shouldn't feel that inside your 10, but if he doesn't feel, if Muhammad doesn't feel that one, it could roll out on the three-yard line. So sometimes you've got to give that return a little bit of his own judgment. A hard, fast rule is good most of the time. I think that was a good play by Muhammad. 2.19 to go in the second quarter. 24-7 Indiana with the lead. Scored on three of their four possessions in the first quarter. All touchdowns. And they added a Mitch Ewald field goal of 26 yards in the second quarter. You want to stay tuned for the Buffalo Wild Wings halftime report. Scores and highlights from today's games. Dave Revson, and Tony Banks and Howard Griffin. Illegal substitution. Offense. 12 men. Half the distance to the goal. First down. You can't break the huddle with 12. Because no, you don't get the defense a fair shot. And yes. That's what happened. It's and pretty, there's pretty so many personnel groupings, Tom, in Indiana's offense. And this is obviously an unusual personnel grouping. Two tight ends, two backs in the flank. From his own end zone. Has a man. Bolzer. Bolzer forced out by Dominique right, Ellis. Bolzer's their tight end that is better in the pass game than the run game. That's a 23 yard pass play coach from his own end zone. This is a Bill Walsh play. This is the flow pass. It's unstoppable, Tom. <laughs> unstoppable. 26 yards, even better for Indiana as they move out close to their own 30 yard line, spotted at the 29. First and 10. Same formation. Edward Wright Baker cannot get away from that pressure. And again, that's Lateris Douglas coming in, number 29. I'm sorry. I, 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 again, Wright Baker has to know that that guy is unblocked. He has to know before the snap. It's a naked play. If there's one more guy hanging outside your tight end, you've got to get out of that play. So when he came up over the line of scrimmage, there's a man on the tight end and a man outside the tight end, which means that the bootleg has no chance. He should have gotten out of it. Hand off this time. That is Houston. Stephen Houston scored on a touchdown run of the first quarter of two yards for his first TD of the season. Okay, it'll be an interesting strategy here. It's third. Well, they'll just try to move the chains on first down for a first down. Third and long for Indiana. Edward Wright Baker, what? 17 of 21 coach, 208 yards, and a TD toss to Dewey's Wilson. Yeah. South Carolina State could have used a timeout here. To give themselves a little bit of time if Indiana doesn't convert. Keep an eye on the clock. 55 seconds to go in the second quarter. From the pocket up top. And too strong. Baker had to time that time, but no, nobody was open. I, 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 you know, they, the receivers got to work. They, they got to shake some, some coverage. Uh, I thought Belcher really was covered the entire time and could have broken, all, broken the route off a little bit. Belcher with four catches so far in the game. He's got 28 yards to his credit. Deweese Wilson, the main guy offensively receiving, four catches and 81 yards, but Drummond is back to receive the punt from Pines. Drummond will stand close to his own 40-yard line. 48 seconds to go in the half. By the reaction of Kevin Wilson on the sidelines, they, they may have been a busted route. I, I don't think that was the receivers were really where they were supposed to be. Drummond. Fair catch, 34-yard line. I would think Coach Pugh uh, will just run this clock out now. I'd be surprised if there's any other strategy. So 41 uh, seconds to go. Coach, you're familiar with the surroundings here in Bloomington. 02 to 04, head man here yeah. for the Hoosiers. Look at this guy. You guys picked the win. I appreciate it. I, I love the way you go over to the assistant coach and say, hey, stop yelling. You know, he grabbed my microphone earlier and said, hey, I got to make a point here real quick. You know, Tom, when I grabbed yours, you, you fought me off a lot better. <laughs> and that, these highlights are from a great victory against Wisconsin during your career against Barry Alvarez. And Coach Alvarez is now a TV star. I saw him on Entourage right. with a guest spot. But but what uh, what a great experience to come here and lead the Hoosiers. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that was a great comeback. And, and, you know, it's funny. When you take a program over like this, just like Kevin Wilson, your players 
play better when they're behind. Believe it or not, they're in their comfort zone. It's protecting the hold. lead that's difficult for teams like this. And you know, that's what happened to, Holding. sorry guys, that's Offense, what happened to number Indiana. number 76, 10 yard penalty, first down. Indiana ran into that situation against Virginia last week. They were down 23 to three coach, rattled off 28 straight points and came within a whisker winning that football game. If not for a de defensive play by Virginia, an incredible play by Cam Johnson to rip the ball away from Edward Wright Baker. Indiana might have already had its first win of the season in the home opener. No question, and it's the sports psychology of building a program. That's one of the reasons we beat Wisconsin that game is our, our, our partners were so used to playing from behind. Protecting the lead is what they don't, they're not comfortable with. It's, well, a gro it's a growing pain in a program like this. Indiana is going to have to protect its lead with 25 seconds. And the clock continues to tick. South Carolina State was content to take a knee and the score will stay 24 seven as we will head to the locker rooms. So that is the end of the first half here in Bloomington with the score 24 seven Indiana on top of South Carolina State. We'll take you to Chicago for the Buffalo Wild Wings halftime report after these messages the Hoosiers with the lead over the Bulldogs at halftime. Down by seven. The Hoosiers taking the field and owning it in the first quarter, scoring on three of their first four possessions for head coach Kevin Wilson, who so desperately wants that first victory of the season. And what an effort from Deweese Wilson in the back of the end zone to make a great grab. And Matt Perez, the battering ram, taking it in from short yardage as well. And the poise and composure of the quarterback, Edward Wright Baker, the story of the first half in Bloomington. 24-7, the lead for the Hoosiers over the Bulldogs from South Carolina State. Tom Wormy, Jerry DiNardo, it's so great to have you out of the studio and have a chance to uh, stretch out a little bit here on location. Great to be here, hope you can put up with me another <laughs> half. I'm looking forward to it actually, Coach. I just want to get your impressions of the first half that we witnessed. We said going into the game, if they played like they played against Virginia, they'd win the game. I think that's going to happen. If you had to say things they had to improve on, nine penalties, way too much. They need to get the tailback involved in the offense a little bit more. It's too much right Baker and the receivers. All right, Coach, now time for the Haas Avocados halftime highlights. We start with that quarterback, Edward Wright Baker, 17 of 22, 208 to TD. And, and growth. You could see he looked to his left, through to his right. How about this one? There's pressure. He can't break contain, but he looks downfield at the exact right time and throws it in there really well done and, and a lot of growth Here, here's another one if you don't rush every rush lane meaning in between the two contained players right Baker will take it every time that's well done by him Deweese Wilson a big play guy today look at this play this was such a good play Tom they called it in the completion <laughs> and, and when they did the replay it was a completion now, how about this one it's not only about being bigger than the defenders it's timing and hand and eye coordination very well done by Deweese Wolf. That play from 46 yards, that one set up a score for the Hoosiers as well. So those were the Hass Avocados halftime high. Here on the Bloomington campus, Kirkwood Avenue, as the students chill out on a beautiful Saturday afternoon for college football as we get ready to start the second half of the Hoosiers on a 24. The seven lead over the South Carolina State Bulldogs as we take a look at the first half stats and they are presented by five hour energy. Clearly Indiana has control of this game, you know, but but as an ex coach, it, it's hard to believe that you, you play a perfect half. So I would say if I was Indiana, here's what I want better. I want my rushing yards more than 119. I especially want them more on first and 10. I especially want to run the ball more with my tailback and the nine penalties. For 58 yards, it's not all that many yards, perhaps, but a lot of those penalties stop my momentum. A lot of those penalties in a closer game would have put would have put the game in jeopardy. But I'll say this. I, I, I'm sorry, Tom. I, I'll say this. Wright Baker has spread the ball all around. And when you look, Tom, at some of the formation formations that Indiana lines up in, with, with three and four wides, and then you look at this chart right here, and you're trying to defend it, you don't really know where to go. And so you have a couple of choices. You can blitz and man everybody up, or you can rush three and try to drop eight because you don't really know who he wants to throw the ball to. All right, coach, let's check in with Stacy on the sidelines. 
Well, I spoke with both coaches there at halftime. Kevin Wilson said a lot what Coach Donardo was just talking about. Too many penalties. It was really sloppy in that first half. And I asked him about Wright Baker, and he told me this is a good opportunity for this young quarterback to continue to grow. He said he's doing well, but he did get bluffed there on the last play. On the other side of things, Buddy Pugh told me they have got to find ways to make big plays. They're just not doing that. They're also having a hard time moving Indiana. Here's the other thing. You can make this uh, certain for sure in the second half. Both teams looking to avoid as many penalties. Thank you, Stacy. Buddy Pugh's team will get the football to start the second half. This is Simmons. Simmons shy of the 25 on the return. Spot him at the 23, first and 10 for the Bulldogs, who trail 24 to 7 as we get going here, get cranked up from Bloomington here in the third quarter. Now, Tom, we've talked a lot about uh, how much the South Carolina State defense has been on the field, but obviously they're just coming off of, of halftime. So if you're looking for a place in your South Carolina State's offense and you want to try a big play, you don't want to play a conservative, you want to go wide open with the risk that if it doesn't work, your defense is going to be on the field in three downs. This is the time to do it because everyone on the defense is well rested because of halftime. Mullen is the injured player being helped by the training staff. A lot of wide open collisions in, in, in the kick game. And there's a lot of injuries in the kick game because of the nature of the play. It's wide open. There's a lot of full speed collisions. And they passed the rule, I don't know if it was 10 or 15 years ago, that all, all blocks in the kick game have to be above the waist. It was, it was a, great, a great new rule. And so we've eliminated some of the penalties in special teams, but there's still a lot of full speed space collisions. Kenny Mullen, a freshman, helped off the field. Ready to go here on first and 10 with the ball on the 23 yard line for the Bulldogs in white. Hoosiers in the cream and crimson. South Carolina came out in the empty set, meaning there's no backs in the backfield. First time I've seen that today. Another flag in the sideline. Could be a late hit out of bounds. Caleb Davis made the catch. Donnell Jones, number 10 for Indiana, was there defensively. Holding offense, number 84, 10 yard penalty. Repeat first down. Well, good start for Indiana's defense. Uh, bad, bad start for South Carolina State being put down. It's Dwight Brandon is 84 out in front yep. of the receiver yep. Davis. Good call. Good call. You've got to let go of him. Remember, you can hold him, Tom. You just have to know when to let go. <laughs> if you can time, time, if you can time it up when Timer. the eyes of the official Please are coming Please reset the game clock. 1448. That from a national champion offensive <laughs> lineman back in 73. For the Fighting Irish, an All-American in '74. There weren't that many Americans, but thank 14, you. 1448. <laughs> Some clock adjustments going on. 1448 officially on the clock as it starts to roll. After the penalty, Wiley kept it. And Wiley got tagged by Darrell Drain. Now, if you go back to the Virginia game. Drain is the one who knocked that football loose and Lawrence Barnett then went 54 yards for a TD. Ultimately though just a little short with that late field goal by Virginia last week. No question and drains the other safety. Him and Atkins are going to be on the line of scrimmage versus this offense. They need the eighth man in the box. Terrell Drain 6'2", 197 the senior on the stick there. And then Darius Johnson double four is making the tackle for that Hoosier defense. Co-defensive coordinators, Doug Mallory and Mike Eckler. What is their assessment of what they've seen so far? Well, I think they're gonna change strategy. They, they ended the half not pressuring South Carolina State. Now, they don't look like they're lined up in pressure here, but I, I thought they would change their strategy and get after South Carolina State on third long. Just two for six on third. There was some movement, and before the play gets rolling, flags come out. This is one of those when the offensive guys are pointing at the defense and the defensive guys are pointing at the offense because it could go either way. And then the officials are getting together saying, yeah. should we believe the offensive guys or the defensive guys? <laughs> Mike Cannon, the referee. Offside. Defense, number 97, getting into the neutral zone, causing the offense to move. Five-yard penalty, third down. Tenth penalty of the game for Indiana. I'm guessing Coach Wilson will have a discussion at some point. 97, Larry Black, Jr., once the 305 pound black junior gets moving tough to stop Wiley too tall for his receiver Tyler McDonald and coach Kevin Wilson has come in with a regimen of fitness 
an exercise as his defense trim and ready for this challenge from a MEAC team. This is the first ever meeting between the teams as Muhammad is back deep to receive the punt. Muhammad at his 38 yard line. In fact, this is the first time South Carolina State has played a Big Ten team. And for Indiana, first time it's ever played a MEAC team. Muhammad at the 41. Fair catch. Kevin Wilson, he's in his first year here, coach, after nine successful seasons at Oklahoma. He went six and one in Big 12 championship games, and in 08, played in the BCS National Championship game, an eventual loss to Florida. Hey, he had a guy named Sam Bradford play for him as well. Who wasn't bad, but I tell you the one thing with all his Kevin Wilson's great experiences, what he brings that they really needed is a really aggressive approach in everything they do. Also Big Ten experience as an assistant at Northwestern under the late Randy Walker. That was an inside zone play bounced outside. This is part of the base package that Kevin Wilson would like to get to. This play that they just ran. They've got to get a little bigger, a little stronger. They need to be a little bit better at tight end blocking to continue to run the one back offense like we just saw. And you saw, you see here that Oklahoma just piled up the yardage. This is national ranks for those years. And the 49 year old from Maiden, North Carolina, pushing all the right buttons with that Oklahoma offense. Yeah, it's probably gonna, right. that, that probably is going to be a holding penalty against Indiana. But that was a play they had not run the first half. They went to empty, and it was a pre designed quarterback play. I, again, if you're South. Holding offense, number 72. 10 yard penalty, still first down. 72 is Andrew McDonald. You, you know, Tom, offensive linemen don't usually get this much attention, but but Andrew today you uh, don't has want this attention, attention yeah. three times. Unwanted. Uh, he's not going to run it later, I don't think. Coach Wilson also has experience in the MEAC, the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference. He coached at North Carolina A&T after his playing days at North Carolina as a walk-on and participating in four bowl games for the Tar Heels. So misdirection right up the middle room to run D'Angelo Roberts finally dragged down Devon Quattlebaum brought him down from behind but it's a 45 yard pickup and, and a, another great play call it, they were behind the stakes misdirection and they give it to one of the best players on their team I shouldn't say that he will be one of the best players <laughs> on the team I don't want to get I don't want to give a true freshman that label it's the worst possible thing <laughs> you could do but Mark my words, D'Angelo Roberts is going to be a heck of a right. player. Roberts, freshman from Bloomington, over 6,000 yards as a high school player and 75 touchdowns. In this penalty fest, I'm guessing this is uh, South Carolina State jumped off sides. Yep. Offside, defense, contact before the snap. Five-yard penalty, still first down. Indiana's doing fine offensively. They probably don't really need South Carolina State's help. They, they, they're probably fine left to their own devices. Here's a running formation. 371 total yards in the game for Indiana. First and five after the penalty. And Tom, when we were looking at those Oklahoma numbers, one of the reasons Oklahoma's numbers were so impressive, other than Ke Kevin Wilson, is the scheme. They'd be in spread. They'd be in the eye formation. The last couple plays, and here's another play, they're in an eye attack. When he can blend that attack at Indiana, they're going to move the ball. Here they go again, back to the ground. And Roberts, but this time, tackled around the ankles as Devon Quattlebaum came back up. Pads are popping here in Bloomington. First thing that hit was Roberts' shoulder pads. He didn't let him get to his legs. Getting the play from the sideline. So probably a run or pass check. The numbers don't tell quarterback to do either. They can do either one here. Roberts again spins his way down to the 12 yard line. Back into the red zone for Indiana. A couple of TDs and a field goal of 26 yards for Mitch Ewald. And this is the fourth trip into the red zone. Moving quickly with Roberts again. 
going to be breathing a little heavy at this point. He got his number called one more time. Yeah, he does. It's just what he needs, and it's just what Indiana offense needs. Now, they need to get a little better work at the tight end because the defensive end is making, is, is putting the tight end in the backfield and denying that outside cut by the running back. Roberts, five carries, 48 yards. Edward Wright Baker has to improvise. Dances his way out of bounds at the 11-yard line. The pressure was coming from Dominique Ellis, senior from Atlanta. Indiana has had success today in the red zone, but coming into the game, here, here you see the, uh, it was going to be the side pass off the decide fake. Indiana came into the game ninth in red zone offense. But they've got to stay out. They've got to develop a running game and have an opportunity to. And it's clear that's what Kevin Wolf is trying to do. Seven of 11 on third down. And then second best in the conference in that category. And he kept up the pace this afternoon against South Carolina State. All day for Edward Wright Baker. Pursued from the backside. The ball came out. Bouncing around on the turf and still loose. And the ball will go to the Bulldogs. Laterris Douglas, number 29 on the cover. So a turnover in the red zone for Indiana. Edward Wright Baker loses the handle. And the ball goes back to the Bulldogs, trailing 24-7. Welcome back to The Rock in Bloomington, Indiana. Indiana turns the ball over in the red zone. Let's watch this play. Edward Wright Baker is going to scramble to his right. At some point, he's not going to throw the ball, and that's when he should tuck it. Right about there, he knows there's no receiver open. Tuck the ball and protect it. Now, right here, DeMarlo Belcher, you're an offensive player. You're not taught to scoop and score. Just fall on the ball. Two errors, two offensive players. Gives the ball back, South Carolina State. It was Douglas who shook it loose from Edward Wright Baker, and then Donovan Richard fell on it as Belcher tried to double back and get his hand in there, but it was Richard on the cover for South Carolina State as they stopped Indiana, which was threatening again in the red zone. The Hoosiers had been three for three with a couple of TDs and a field goal in the red zone this afternoon. The shadows starting to creep across the Memorial Stadium field. Wiley. Got rid of it incomplete. Again, it goes back to a fundamental top. We, we started the game saying that South Carolina State had to stay on schedule. They gained one yard on first down, so now it's second and nine. Wiley and South Carolina State averaged 66 yards a game passing. They can't pass their way to victory. They got to run the ball on first down. They got 69 yards on a pass I play know. in the first half. But just 66 the average coming into today's contest. Two of seven on third down for South Carolina State. Pressure was coming. Flags are on the field. Uh, this is going to be defensive right end, I believe. Offside. Right. Defense number 75, unabated to the quarterback. Five-yard penalty. It remains third down. Nicholas Sliger is number 75. You, get, you don't get uh, paid by commission if you're an official, right? It's not a commission. Not job. that it's I... A flat rate drive. Although Mike Cannon has been on TV a lot today. A referee 24 7 here nine and a half to go in the third pass complete over the middle Caleb Davis spins at the 30 and is dragged down first down for South Carolina State Jeff Thomas number 53 on the tackle 12 yards on the connection for the Bulldogs and again they're playing coverage watch this there's no pressure at there's no pressure at all on Wiley I'm a little surprised Indiana's not pressing on third down because I'm not sure South Carolina State can handle the pressure look for him to pressure next third down so the Bulldogs start to speed up the tempo just a little bit. Carry out across the 35 to the 38-yard line. That is Julius Pendergrass. He's a freshman from Chester, South Carolina. Remember, South Carolina State's concept and offense is big splits, hit them up the middle, and then run that wide sweep like they just ran. Wiley in the game, coach. 8 of 14, passing 150 yards. And that 69-yard TD to McDonald. Wiley calls his own number right up the middle. Bang! 
banging his way into Indiana territory. A determined run from number 19 for his head coach, Buddy Pugh. You're exactly right, Tom. Predetermined run, design run, and, and Doug Mallory, co-defensive coordinator, told us about this yesterday. Big splits, watch. Big splits, and then they spread out the defense, and they run the ball up the field. How about Tristan Bellamy, the center, clearing the way for his quarterback to go 19 yards on the play. One of the captains for South Carolina State. First and ten Bulldogs with hesitation deep ball against double coverage and that was McDonald incomplete as we go to Dave Repson in the studio for a discovery card game break. So Wisconsin on its way to going three and oh in the early portion of the season. Here it's Indiana looking for its first victory of the season. But take a look at the first two weeks. They lose by seven to Ball State in Indianapolis to start the season. They lose by just three to Virginia in a game they really could have had. A heartbreaking loss against Virginia. And now they are closing in here in the third quarter on the first victory of the season, but a ways to go up 24-7. But I'm going to tell you, the heartbreak was Ball State, because if they play Ball State the way they play Virginia, they win the game. That was the real heartbreak. That, that is what Kevin Wilson said. They, they didn't have the passion level and the commitment level. They brought it up last week. And they continue to build on what they've done the first two weeks. Terrell Drain making the play for Indiana. Well, yeah, now they're pressuring South Carolina State because the last two or three third rounds they tried to cover and they couldn't do it. Bring the heat. Make them handle it. Erickson on to punt. For South Carolina State. Dre Muhammad, the deep man at his own 14-yard line. Muhammad, a senior on this year's team, makes the fair catch successfully at the 12-yard line. And the Hoosiers will take over, owning a 24-7 lead in Bloomington. Seven twenty-seven to go in the third quarter here on BTN 24-7 Indiana. The Polaris hardest working player. Edward Wright Baker, 208 yards through the air, 49 on the ground, and a touchdown pass. And not only the hardest worker, but the most productive, about 72% of the Indiana offense. And I'm going to tell you, Tom, there's an epidemic of quarterbacks having an unbelievable percentage of offenses in the Big Ten. And now we can add Edward Wright Baker to that group. Guys like Robinson and Martinez Brennan. and Russell Wilson. And a new quarterback is in for Indiana as the hardest working player. That's Gets a hard either. As Dusty Keel comes in to shovel one forward. He was working play. so hard, Todd, they <laughs> took him out. So we were right up. So Marlo Belcher got that little shovel pass from Keel. Surprised Dusty Keel's in only because I thought Trey Robinson would be the second quarterback in. I know. Trey Robinson, the freshman, is the other quarterback at Kevin Wilson's disposal. There is a flag on the field. The False start. Offense, number 59. Five-yard penalty, second down. Penalty against the Hoosiers. And also action on the Big Ten Network. Knotted up as they head to the fourth quarter. Miami and Minnesota. Check BTN.com to find your channel to view that game. Ball start. Offense, number 59. Half the distance to the goal. Second down. 59 is Peyton Eckert. True freshman. Tough duty. You're back in, you backed up. Uh, you know, you survived this, and it's all, it's all great experience. If it doesn't cost you a game, uh, tough duty for a true freshman. 650 and counting. Keel from his own end zone. Luis Wilson tried to shake the defender and spun out of bounds. South Carolina State came with, with full blitz in that play. That's a heck of a play by Dusty Keel. I mean, he, he hadn't even gotten warmed up yet, and he's facing full, full blitz. Well done by Keel. Dusty Keel at quarterback, 6'2", 216 pounds, a sophomore from Columbus, Indiana, with his first significant action Keel escapes the pressure a flag comes out and it's picked off it's intercepted by Ellis 
That one's coming back. It's defensive offsides, I believe. Okay, so there are two flags down oh, okay. in the same vicinity inside the Indiana five. Keel through the interception, but is it coming back? Ellis, who had two interceptions last week, made it, but will it stand? There are offsetting fouls on the play. Offside, defense number 40. Holding offense number 64. Offsetting fouls, replay, third down. So this is like it never happened, Tom. This, <laughs> this, this just erases everybody's mess. Yes. This, what you're watching really didn't happen. It's offset, <laughs> so they play, the, they play it over again. It's kind of like the stats for the Michigan uh, Notre Dame game. Yes, they had the. Uh... <laughs> All right, here we go now. We'll reset it at third and 11 with the ball. On the 12-yard line for Indiana. Dusty Keel is into the game for Edward Wright Baker. South Carolina State's going to play coverage. Last time they blitzed. Keel. Sucked in the defense, trying to drop it off and incomplete. Looking for Roberts. So Keel now trots off the field with his offensive unit and a punting situation. Surprise Keel was in. I, like I said, I thought Roberts would go, go in first. And that and, and this end of the field is tough to put a new quarterback in. So it, it was it was a it was tough duty for for Dusty Keel. Roberson is the, the quarterback coach is referring to who saw action in one play against Virginia last week. Just a single play as Pines was about three or four yards deep in his own end zone. Takes a South Carolina State bounce and goes inside the 40 down at the 38. Now the Indiana players claim that a Bulldog touched it but the officials do not agree. So 6.08 to go in the third quarter. And the Hoosier lead for Kevin Wilson, 24-7 over South Carolina State. Even the 608 left in the third quarter from Bloomington. Hoosiers 24-7 on top of the Bulldogs. This week on Fox NFL Sunday, the Bears look to build off their week one win as they take on a Saints team looking to get its first win of the season or Seahawks, Steelers, Packers, Panthers. Buccaneers, Vikings, or Cardinals, Redskins, or the Cowboys look to bounce back from a tough loss as they battle the 49ers in San Francisco. Coverage begins tomorrow. Fox NFL Sunday pregame show, noon Eastern, 11 Central. Check your local listings for the games and times in your area. South Carolina State ran just a base to side play. They're just off schedule. My guess is that Coach Pugh has told his offensive coaches four down territory. Great field position. For the Bulldogs from the 35 yard line of Indiana. And guess what, Coach DiNardo? Uh, I'll guess two things. There's a penalty. <laughs> yeah. Offside, defense number 75 with contact. Five yard penalty, still second down. So, right now, a very interesting juncture in the ball game. Indiana has pretty much controlled the pace of play, leading 24 7, Coach, but. Here's great field position for South Carolina State, a chance for the Bulldogs. No question. It, I mean, this changes the game. It, it could be 24-14 in a heartbeat. And yet, South Carolina State hasn't moved the ball at all. So South Carolina State continues with the ground game. But we've seen Indiana make strides on both sides of the football this afternoon, still searching for that first win of the season after the tough losses, especially last week against Virginia in the closing seconds. For sure, Tom, but but they're playing hard. They're playing sloppy, but but there's not anybody in the Indiana, Indiana team that's not flying around the field, and, and that's what they needed to do today. 5.15 and counting. Indiana up to 386 total yards after going for 319 last week against Virginia. The balanced attack last week, 171 pass, 148 rush. Edward Wright Baker with 208 passing. He just got replaced. South Carolina with the ball here in Wiley with the pass and complete to Pendergrass. Second and two for the Bulldogs and their head coach Buddy Pugh so successful three straight MEAC championships four overall in Pugh's 10 year career in Orangeburg South Carolina which is kind of right between Columbia and Charleston in South Carolina. This is by far South Carolina State's best work offensively now they had good field position on, on this drive so that's certainly 
has helped them. They were down here once before, and, and, they, and they fumbled the ball. Red zone attack from South Carolina State. Wiley hands it off. Driving towards the goal line was Simmons. The ball came out and then covered. Thomas Williams, number 12. Coach, you just said it a second ago about the previous fumble in the red zone. Almost happened again. Absolutely have to secure the football. Two arms around it when you're in traffic. You've got to keep it against your body. Tom, the, the important thing here is that they can still get a first down. I mean, there's no better situation than second and one at this part of the field. Just need to get to the four. They'll throw it to the end zone. And it's a touchdown for South Carolina State and Caleb Davis. Indiana scored on a waist down second and one, and now South Carolina scores on a second and one. Now, this second and one's a little different because of the area of the field. But that's a down and distance. You've got to be a little bit conservative on your call. You can't cut a receiver loose. Three yards officially on the little touchdown drop off to Caleb Davis. And the second touchdown pass of the game for Derek Wiley, who hadn't converted through the air for a touchdown pass prior to the game this afternoon. So three yards on the touchdown grab. Here is Erickson. The extra point for South Carolina State. They capitalize on the great field position and make it a 10 point game. So Buddy Pugh's team climbing right back into this one against the Hoosiers. It's Wiley to Davis. 24-14 Hoosiers in the lead. When Big Ten football Saturday is over, the final drive presented by Sprint breaks it all down. In the drive numbers on that, I'll take it. So South Carolina State gets back in the end zone and cuts the Indiana Hoosier lead to 10 points with 352 to go in the third quarter. Tonight in prime time, look at that matchup. The Illini battle 18th ranked Arizona State under the lights. Pac-12 Big Ten showdown. 7 p.m. Eastern only on BTN. Another pooch, pump, pooch kickoff. They've done it every single time. You've got to set up a turn off that. Yeah, that was Houston making the play. He's part of the running back group for Indiana. As we go to Chicago, Dave Rebson and a Discover well, card. Game break. Houston on the return. 33 Thompson knocks them out. Hey, Tom, you want to call me crazy? This is, I would never do that. This is... But you say this is good news for Indiana. I do. If you're Indiana, would you rather win a close game today or would you rather have a blowout? What's best big picture? If you win either way, this is a better scenario. You, you grow more from, from, from this kind of victory. Uh, a one-sided victory after losing to Ball State, after having your heart ripped out at the end of Virginia, this is exactly what Indiana needs. So Fitz was the injured player for South Carolina State as we go to Stacy for a QB update. Well, you will see right back in the mix right now. Dusty Keel coming in. He's sick. Roberson, we saw him take one snap a week ago, and he was more of a scrambler, so this was certainly a design play. Okay, Stacy. so Edward Wright-Baker is back in, so they wanted to get Dusty Keel some reps. Not a whole lot of production, but right Baker inserted right back into the game. And I guess the reason he's back is that pick that was called back, that probably scared the coaches. When he was offsetting penalties, would kill through the pick. That probably got the coaches a little afraid to put him back in the game. There are two penalty markers on the field. Full start, offense, number 59. Five-yard penalty, first down. Also consider, Coach, we now have a 10-point game here, and nothing is certain, although yeah. Indiana has controlled the flow of play without question. The penalties continue to mount 16 against the Hoosiers. Well, this isn't an excuse, but it's a reason. You've got two quarterbacks who've played now. You have three freshman offensive line that have played now. And, and so part of that is getting used to the cadence. We don't know if this, these five offensive linemen practice all day, all week together. They may have just made these decisions yesterday to play some other guys. It's not an excuse. It's just a reason why they've had some of the procedures. Six yards for D'Angelo Roberts, the freshman from here in Bloomington. This is Roberts again. Hits the defense head on close to the marker as we go to Chicago. Dave Repson and the Discover Card game break. Okay, Tom, Minnesota getting a big touchdown against 16. Thank you, Dave, here in Bloomington. The Hoosiers go for short yardage on third down and get a first down to the 33-yard line. 
you know, taking over the line of scrimmage has a lot to do with the five guys up front, but it also has a lot to do with that running back. And, and Roberts, they keep feeding them the ball, they're going to march into a score. D'Angelo Roberts now nine carries. Up to 10 carries now for 60 yards as Kofi Hughes makes the catch. Clock will continue to roll. Dominique Ellis on the tackle for South Carolina State. Here's the offensive line. I mean, there's, there, look at this. There's only two guys, McDonald and Matty, who, who have played any length of time in this program. Will Matty is one of the captains for the Hoosiers. Roberts knifes his way through. Gets close to the 21 yard line. That is first down yardage for Roberts. So he's carried on a couple of key downs and converted those to a fresh set of downs. He's got great body lean, never lets anybody hit him in the legs. First and 10 from the 21. Indiana approaching the red zone again. Roberts takes him in. Last trip into the red zone was the fumble by Edward Wright Baker on the pressure from behind where he lost control of the football. Not only was a fumble, they were behind and down in distance because they weren't running the ball like they're running it now. If they can continue to run it like this, they won't put Baker in that position. Seven yards on the previous play, second and short. Roberts has a hole over the left side and gets inside the 10 as Donovan Richard brought him to the turf. This whole drive. This whole drive is going to be shown to this Indiana team on Sunday and Monday whenever they meet. And Kevin Wilson is going to say, this is what I want our running game to look like. We did it Saturday. We have to do it the rest of the year. And this is also in response to the most recent score by South Carolina State as well when they had great field Yep, position. that's fine. Timeout. Sink. South Carolina State. Their first charge timeout. This will be a 30-second timeout. This is why this tight game is so good, Tom. I mean, if this was a blowout, we might, we, the Indiana team would not be in this position where Coach Wilson brought him over and said, look, I want to march the ball down the field. That's why these close games are good, to build a program. Then when you build a program, you like the blowouts. <laughs> D'Angelo Roberts being featured during this particular drive, which is now moved all the way inside the 10, the eight yard line for Indiana. Coming up tonight, prime time. The Fighting Illini battle 18th ranked Arizona State under the lights. Pac-12 Big Ten Showdown, 7 p.m. Eastern. It is only on BTN. You saw Greg Fry there a moment ago, the offensive line coach, talking to his, talking to his offensive line. Fry was at Michigan for the last three years. Got a lot of experience in this conference. First and goal for the Hoosiers. Three for four in the red zone. Roberts didn't get much. Okay, now they may come back in this very same formation because uh, Belcher has single coverage up top. And they may line up in the same personnel grouping and, and run throw the fade to the top of the screen because they're outnumbered. That's that that's why that play didn't work. Well, they're in a different formation. Now. Second and goal with a three receiver set. Roberts, the running back, as a good number of the players turn to the sideline for the play adjustment. As Edward Wright Baker goes back to the shotgun. Roberts to the goal line and in. D'Angelo Roberts from seven yards away for a Hoosier TD. So the strategy there was they were in a run formation, but it was getting kind of sticky, and they were getting outnumbered. So what Kevin Wilson did is he put him in a pass formation and ran the ball. It was great strategy. Uh, that, that whole series was great play selection by the Indiana offensive coaches. And for Roberts, the freshman, his first rushing touchdown after scoring 75 during his high school career at Bloomington North High School. I don't know that he'll get to 75, but he's going to be a heck of a running back. Mitch Ewald. So we have witnessed the, the future of the Indiana rushing game, the first TD run of his career for D'Angelo Roberts from seven yards away. Watch his pad level on contact. Okay. Gets his shoulders down. Most of the time he runs the ball, you can't get to his legs. Well done by Bernard Taylor, true freshman out of Detroit, Michigan, the left guard starting his first game. It was a great combination by him. A combination a lot. Angelo Roberts from Bloomington North High School here. It wasn't a long trip on his recruiting, on his recruiting visit. 
You got to keep them intact. You know, <laughs> part of this, you know, there's not a whole lot of guys that you're going to offer in the state. And when there's a guy like D'Angelo Roberts, you've got to get him. And uh, I used to tell the local kids, it's the best of both worlds. You're away from home, you're away from your parents, but you can go home when you have dirty laundry, and they can <laughs> share the experience with you. It's, it, it, it's an absolute home run for a local guy. Roberts got a significant taste of action against Virginia with 11 carries for 48 yards last week. He now has his first touchdown of his career here late in the third quarter as the kickoff goes out of bounds. Of course, Tom, if I was recruiting someone from far away, I would say, you, you don't want to go to school by you. There's local. a whole other story. <laughs> whole other story. Free kick, out of bounds, kicking team. By rule, the ball will be placed at the 40-yard line, first down. So we'll put the ball in play at the 40-yard line, and it's now time for the Sprint Unlimited update. Edward Wright Baker, 30 yards to Deweese Wilson to get it cranked up and going for the Hoosiers coach. Absolutely great catch, dragging his feet in. This play here, 69 yards to McDonald from Wiley for a TD, but Perez, he is the key short yardage back, takes it into the end zone. South Carolina State capitalizing on good field position, but then it's the freshman, D'Angelo Roberts, who on that drive, Coach, had eight carries, 46 yards, and capped it with the TD run. You know what they say, Tom? He's the man. Seven yards on the touchdown scamper. Yeah, it was well done. For Roberts. That first play by South Carolina State was well done as well. It's their, it's their base pitch sweep. Final seconds of the third quarter come off the scoreboard. And the Indiana Hoosiers will go to the fourth quarter with the lead against South Carolina State. 31-14. Perez, Roberts, Edward Wright Baker, South Carolina State trying to hang tough, but it's Indiana up 31 14. So your policy looks good. Is there anything else? Why'd you buy my husband a Falcon? Thanks for the Falcon. I didn't buy anyone a Falcon. Sure, you did. You saved us a lot of money on auto insurance. I used that money to buy a Falcon. Ergo, you bought me a Falcon. Should get a Falcon. Most people who switch to State Farm save on average about $480. What they do with it, well, that's their business. Oh, that explains a lot, actually. <laughs> Another reason people switch to State Farm. Oh, I could have got a Falcon. Get to a better state. DN. 31 14 Hoosiers as we get ready to start. The fourth quarter at Memorial Stadium as we get today's Verizon key connection. Wright Baker, Deweese Wilson, 88 yards, representing a career high for Deweese Wilson. Edward Wright Baker, surgical, 18 for 23, 213 yards. Yeah, this connection got Indiana going early in the game. Without those two, I'm not sure we're watching the same game. That was the first touchdown of the game, a 30-yard completion as that one falls incomplete. That was a great catch, if you recall, Coach, by Deweese Wilson in the back of the end zone where he was able to maintain possession and start the scoring for Indiana. He did it last week against Virginia, too, here as this one falls to the turf. Yeah, that ball goes up in the air. You Two, know, three players with a chance at it. And then Murphy almost got the fingertips under the football. Wiley on the run, complete Caleb Davis. Third medium. They spurt Wiley out. He's got a run pass option. There was a wide open receiver, only about two yards past the stakes. Very well executed by South Carolina State. Wiley's left handed. They rolled him to the left. It was really well done by South Carolina State. Wiley not bad himself. 10 of 19. 163 yards. Couple of touchdown passes. Killing his average. <laughs> One to Davis and a 69 yarder to McDonald. Hadn't thrown a touchdown pass prior to today. He gets crunched under. 53 and 30. Thomas and Drain combining on the hit. Yeah. You know, we said going into the game that Thomas was going to be a key factor. And we said that Drain and Atkins, the two safeties, were going to have to be on the line of scrimmage at first and 10. Well, that was first and 10. That was a base play by South Carolina State. And Thomas and Drain were there. Thomas hit him so hard, he knocked his teammate, Darrell Drain, sideways on the tackle of the ball carrier, Derek Wiley. Simmons puts his head down. 
You know, when we visited with the, the, the defensive coaches, with, with Doug Mallory yesterday, they were more worried about the inside run game than they were the outside run game. And the outside run game has, you can see it here, has given them a little bit more difficulty maybe. And the point of emphasis may have been the inside game, and that's why. Great block from Devin Weary, number 27, to spring the runner for 10 yards. Pass up top, nobody there. Beyond the coverage, Lawrence Barnett was the closest one to it. So South Carolina State did not come in with the greatest of passing attacks, but they're going to have to maybe rely on it here, Coach, with 13.43 to go to get back into this one, trailing 31-14. And, and they've won so much at South Carolina State. That's a championship program, and the kids aren't going to fall. And they're, they're fighting back. I mean, they're on the Indiana 35-yard line. They, they get 21 points here. Wiley up to 168 yards passing, couple of TDs. Pulls it back, hits McDonald. Couple of dance moves at the 32 yard line by McDonald. Mark Murphy in on the tackle. 37 is Murphy. You know, and, and Murphy's a true freshman, and that was really well done by him. The corner took, make, took the leverage to the play. He was outside the ball and brought it right back into Murphy. Well done. Wiley's numbers continue to escalate. Gaining a little confidence during the course of this drive, but it's third down here. Let's it rip. Might be just shy of the marker as we go to Chicago. Dave Revson in the studio. We'll hang here for just a moment, coach. Hang here for just a moment. Okay, that last third down coverage was man free. So there's a middle safety and everyone else is man underneath. It was really uh, the perfect call for the route that South Carolina State tried to run. South Carolina State has only gone for it on fourth down on one previous occasion and did get it. Right here, it's Wiley down to the 20 yard line. First down yardage for Wiley. Empty set. The only, the only run play you have to worry about is the quarterback predetermined run, whether it's a draw or off tackle play. Six yards on the carry for Derek Wiley. He's a junior from Rockingham, North Carolina. Caught Indiana a little bit flat footed on that formation. How about what Wiley did against Bethune Cookman last week? 121 yards rushing. This time he wants to throw, hits his man, no, dropped. The drop from Julius Pendergrass, and he's very frustrated with himself after the incompletion. Wide open, let's see it here. It's a, a bootleg, it's a uh, multi-level route. He was eyeing the end zone, Pendergrass was. Yep, thinking about the end zone too much. Yep. Just broke concentration just for that split second. This is first down. I mean, I know it's second down, but the play call is taking first down because they're not going to kick a field goal. So your, your, your whole mindset is different as a play call in second attempt with this situation. From the 21, 12 17 to go in the game. Simmons sheds a man at the 20. Simmons to the end zone. And a touchdown. 21 yards. Simmons shook the first attacker and then took it to the house. No, I, I, South Carolina State just controls the line of scrimmage a little bit. There was one, there was one missed assignment by the look like the left guard of South Carolina State, but Indiana still has to be a little firmer on the play side of that. Action came to the defensive right side. Murphy had the best shot at him, and then Weary threw another key block for the Bulldogs. So Erickson comes in, extra point, up and through. So Kevin Wilson just can't shake these Bulldogs from South Carolina State. Ten point lead here in the fourth quarter. Welcome back to Bloomington, Indiana. 12-10 left in this final period, 31-21. Now when you look across the field and you see the visiting South Carolina uh, Bulldogs are going to notice that Buddy Pugh, of course, working the sidelines. He learned a lot from a man that you may recognize the name of Lou Holtz. Of course, Lou Holtz was there from 1999 to 2004 at South Carolina. Well, he retained Buddy as the running backs coach. You look at all the success that Lou Holtz had, the only college coach to lead six different programs to bowl games. Buddy told us one of the many things he learned from Lou Holtz ability to inspire players and he holds nothing back from his players which is also a credibility to Buddy's honesty and I know coach Denardo that's something you really miss about coaching is really being involved with those players and watching them excel 
Yeah, no question, Stacy. I, I mean, when Buddy said the other day that he learned the most about player-coach relationships from from Lou, I, I thought that was really amazing. And you know, Lou's always had an eye for talent, but obviously, it's not only playing talent; it's coaching talent. When he took over at South Carolina, when he took over at South Carolina, he he retained. Uh, Buddy Pugh. Buddy's from South Carolina, has great history there. His, his dad was an ag teacher, his mom was a math teacher, and Buddy was a math teacher. And Lou Holtz wanted him to be part of his program when he was at South Carolina. And how about his record in conference games over the last three years, Coach? 24 and 1, and a share of two titles and one outright in the MEAC. Let's still be coaching with that record. Roberts with the carry for Indiana. Now, when Buddy Pugh took over the program, he took over for a legendary coach. There have been some great names to come through the program as well. Harry Carson, the linebacker, and the legendary coach Willie Jeffries, who Buddy took over for in 2002. Coach Emeritus at South Carolina State. Buddy's program 08 and 09, outright champs in the MEAC. And then last season, and then in 2004, co champions as well. And the conference coach of the year in 09. They've also been to the FCS playoffs three years in a row as well, Coach Bernardo. And, and what a schedule. I, I mean, they opened at Central, then they went to Bethune Cookman, and now they're here in Bloomington. That's tough duty. White Baker connects with Belcher, a little stiff arm, and then he gets cut down. At the 42-yard line, that'll move the chains for Indiana. Seven yards on the pass play. Edward Wright Baker to number 88, Belcher. You know, I think Kevin Wilson right now is still thinking big picture. He ran it on first down. He ran it on second down. And obviously, he threw it to move the chains. But he hasn't been happy with his, his run game all the first two games. And I think it's a point of emphasis for today. He's probably going to stay with it. Ten-point lead for the Hoosiers to the air. And that is incomplete. Looking for Houston on the play, coach. Right, and, and again, those are run pass audible. So uh, when that play is called, really, the players, the coaches, nobody knows until they see the defensive alignment, whether it's going to be a run or a pass. Now, if they get in the I formation, if they get in a one back formation, those formations tend to be predetermined runs or predetermined passes. 230 yards on the ground for Indiana during the course of the afternoon as they made that a point of emphasis against the Bulldogs. They're going to add to that total with Edward Wright Baker high stepping it out of bounds just beyond the 45 forced out by Drummond and the incredible field vision of Edward Wright Baker continues to improve each and every play. Here you can see it again. South Carolina State voids a rush lane and Wright Baker is going to take it almost every time. Ten and a half to go in the fourth quarter. Third and five for Indiana. Eight of 14 on third down. All right, Baker gets it away. Deweese Wilson makes an amazing catch at the 40. How did he do it? You know, it's interesting, the, the tempo of, of Indiana's offense here. Let's watch this. It's a great catch. They're, they're not in their hurry up. They're not in their slow down. They, they have three speeds. This is the middle speed. Great catch by Deweese. 13 yards on the catch by Deweese Wilson. He was an expert at juggling and then maintaining control. Down the sidelines, Kofi Hughes, the tightrope job, and he's into the house. I had officials right behind Kofi. I mean, that was well done by Kofi and by Wright Baker. 40 yards on the play and most of it Kofi Hughes skirting the sideline but staying in bounds and getting to the end zone. And how about the block by Belcher knocking his guy over gives Kofi Hughes a chance to do it. He should have leaned a little bit to the left Tom just to make sure <laughs> that his body weight didn't take him out of bounds. Okay now the officials may be reviewing this situation. I will be shocked if they I'll be shocked if they bring this back because the, the line judge was in perfect, perfect position. He was directly behind Kofi Hughes. And, and a lot of officiating is position. If they're in the right position, they're going to make the right plays, right calls. Fantastic camera work by our crew. You see the high stepping action on the sideline by Kofi Hughes with style points, I might add. 
And now we'll get a perfect look at it. You see the official right behind him, Tom. That official, ooh. I, I tell you what, I think he kept the heel he elevated. Right. Only the official can see that heel, right? Exactly. I mean, unless we have a rear camera, and that's why p positioning yep. is can, so much of officiating. You see the little recycled ooh. tire bits being spit up. And Hughes doing a balancing act along the near sideline. You know, you practice on this stuff, and you, when you when you go home after practice, you have about a pound of that red, the rubber stuff in your sh shoes. So the play is under review. Uh, Coach Pugh's trying to help him out. I, I mean, he's clearly saying it's my sidelines. I saw him step out of bounds. Well, it's all it's all where the heel is, Tom. If after further review, the play stands is called on the field. Touchdown. Good officiating. You need indisputable video evidence to overturn the call that's already been made on the field. It does not exist. It's a touchdown for Kofi Hughes. Absolutely. Well done. First touchdown of the season for Kofi Hughes. Ewald, the tech on the extra point. Edward Wright Baker, 21 of 27. 273 yards and a couple of touchdown passes. One to Wilson. And one to Hughes. Indiana up 38-21. Plenty of push-ups being done on the synthetic surface here at Memorial Stadium. Time for the United States Marine Corps salute. Kofi Hughes, today's leader of the game. This is a 40-yard touchdown pass and run for Kofi Hughes. Three catches. 47 yards. Hey, Tom, it's only a three yard pass unless tomorrow Belcher gets that block. And so tomorrow Belcher should get three points of that six point play. He should get credit. They don't do that in football. They do that in <laughs> touchdowns. This is Kofi Hughes, today's leader of the game. As he danced along the sideline with a 40 yard touchdown play for Indiana. Simmons wrapped up across the 21 yard line. Coming up tonight in primetime, it's the Fighting Illini in a battle with 18th ranked Arizona State under the lights in a Pac-12 Big Ten showdown. 7 p.m. Eastern only on BTN. Another monster day of Big Ten college football here on the Big Ten Network. Tom Wormy along with the coach, Jerry DiNardo, Stacey Pates patrolling the sidelines. Coach, I got to say it was great, great to have you here. Chance to get out of the studio and... And uh, stretch your legs a little bit here in Bloomington, a place you know so well. Passing completed nearly, nearly picked off. So here we are in Bloomington, Indiana, closing in on its first victory of the season. How big for Kevin Wilson after the heartbreak of the first two weeks to be approaching this victory and feel pretty solid here in the fourth quarter? I, I think it's huge, and it started by... Indiana playing hard right from the first snap. And, and I think the back and forth in the South Carolina State team that won't give up, I think it's good for Indiana. This is a much better game than if it was one-sided from the very beginning. So the, the learning curve is accentuated because of the fact that South Carolina State has refused to go away throughout the entire afternoon. Don't we all learn more under pressure than if there's no pressure? And, and so for the Indiana players, they were put in much more difficult situations because this was a close game. And if you, if you look at the score, 38-21 and you're not watching you may not think it was close this was a close game yes absolutely i felt the pressure all day next to this <laughs> top broadcast professional usually you see coach denardo in the studio doing such a wonderful job with dave and howard and tony banks filling in in the studio today but coach it really has been a pleasure to uh, share the broadcast booth with you this afternoon wow it's been my pleasure to be in your world and stacy's world and i appreciate the way you're teaching a rookie <laughs> no, no, no. Up. the big 10 and college football that is your world bottom line no question about it 38 21 eight and a half minutes to go that sideline for indiana starting to bounce with enthusiasm south carolina's already converted on one fourth down they may be short here coach i think they've got i think the the, the spots are right. favorable towards south carolina state interesting enough uh, Indiana was in the perfect defense. They pressured. They were in cover one, so everybody was man coverage except for the free safety, and they could fill all the gaps trying to stop a fourth and short. But I believe it's a first down. And as usual, Coach Donato, right on the money. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't know about that. See, you're, you're, to, you're to my right, so you had a better angle. Oh, I got spot. You. I got you see you. how that works? 
I, pre I appreciate you giving me the good angle. <laughs> Short yards is all about penetration. If you penetrate on defense, you usually stop. If you stop penetration on offense, you usually move the chains. Two for two now for the Bulldogs on fourth down. This play broken up and busted up. 37 is Mark Murphy, who had it read well. Young Mark Murphy. First start, Mark Murphy. Think about all the reps, that, the pressure reps, to go back to our point about a tight game. Think of all the pressure reps that the young players got. Three new offensive linemen. You can't manufacture this in practice, Tom. Wiley. The integrity of that pocket was compromised, and Wiley had to rush out to his own 35-yard line. Did good to make something out of that one, Coach. When you're playing defense, you never can lose contain. Whether it's a run player, pass play, someone has to keep the ball inside and front. Taking a look around the Big Ten, we update the Minnesota-Miami of Ohio game. 1.43 to go, and Minnesota has that 29-23 win. You know, the Golden Gophers also looking for their first win of the season in the wake of all the events surrounding their ho head coach, Jerry Kill. Absolutely, and more important than anything, Jerry's out of the hospital and, he, and he's feeling better, and it'd be great to get a win today. Hit btn.com, check your alternate channels if you want to see the finish of Minnesota as the Gophers try to chase down their first win of the season also. Indiana defending on third and six. Incomplete into the South Carolina State sideline. Cover one, which is man free. They had a free safety in the middle and everybody else was locked up. Perfect call by Indiana's defensive coaches. They couldn't shake free. Frustration. Between head coach Buddy Pugh and his quarterback Derek Wiley, he didn't have anywhere to go. I don't think with the ball. I didn't. I didn't see anybody open. I thought Indiana just outplayed him on that play. Trey Muhammad, the deep man, creeps up to his own 33-yard line. Punt from Erickson. Muhammad wants a fair catch. Hangs onto it at the 28-yard line. First and ten for the Hoosiers. Back to Bloomington right after this. The encore performance from Brian Violet at Opie Taylor's restaurant owned by Eric, Eric Havel. And he belts out the Indiana fight song as Trey Roberson has come in as the new quarterback for Indiana. Hey, before we get to Roberson, I just want you to know, I was in bed at 8 o'clock last night because it was the night before a game. I don't know where you guys were. <laughs> Obviously, you were out late last night. Roberson, highly recruited guy out of Indianapolis. Uh, I thought we'd see him earlier than this. He, he, he's got a great future ahead of him. It'll be interesting how it plays out. Roberson will hand it off this time as we head down to the sidelines and Stacy Pates. The third IU quarterback on the day, Dusty Keel, of course, more of the basic pocket passer. What you're going to see from Roberson, more of a scrambler. He took one snap last week. That was a design play. And uh, he's a guy that just got extra encouragement from Wright Baker. Wright Baker was in his ear, giving him some extra instruction before he took to the field, giving this kid extra confidence. Thank you, Stacy. Edward Wright Baker also with a tremendous game today, including 21 passes, 273 yards, a couple of TDs, all career highs for Edward Wright Baker as Roberson steps out of bounds. On sportsmanlike conduct, taunting number 30 of the defense, 15 yard penalty, first down. Various Drummond Flagged for the personal foul. Five fifty seven to go in the fourth. Indiana Hoosiers. zero and two. South Carolina State one and one. But it looks like the Hoosiers are closing in on the first win of the season. Roberson takes off. Dragged down from behind by Dominique Ellis. Edward Wright Baker. Career highs in completions, yards, and touchdowns. Couple of TD passes. One to Deweese Wilson. One to Kofi Hughes. And a great game for Wright Baker. Still got the helmet on. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, Dusty Keel's in, in the quarterback now. 
Uh, so this is the second time Keel has come into the game. Great decision there to find the safety valve in D'Angelo Roberts. Went through his progression, then hit number 20 right between the numbers. Yeah, here's, here's Dusty Keel again. He, he sits in the pocket, he, he just moves his feet, doesn't start scrambling, makes a nice throw. It's always hard when you bring second quarterbacks and third quarterbacks in with, with place like you. You've got to be careful of the scoreboard and the, and the sportsmanship component of it. You might not have a, a line in there that can really protect the quarterback. It's very difficult to get quality reps on a second or third quarterback unless it's early in the game and you three, you've decided before the game to rotate it. First and 10 Indiana from the South Carolina State 31 yard line. Keel kept it and then got rid of it. Pressure was coming fast and furiously from Pat Washington. Kills pass incomplete. Yeah, this, uh, again, it's just very difficult situations for quarterbacks to come in towards the end of the game like this. The defense gets away from their tendency. So it's another penalty. Intentional grounding. Offense number eight. Penalties a loss of down at the spot of the foul. Second down. It was obviously a tight competition between Wright Baker and, and, and Dusty Keel. And of course, we were at practice, but you know we're not there every day. But he's made a couple bad decisions. That was a bad decision. The pick that was nullified because of offsetting penalties. And maybe it came down to Wright Baker was making better decisions than Dusty Keel was. Traditional formation of the center. Second down for Indiana. Spot the ball at the the three yard line of South Carolina State. Quick little dump off looking again for Roberts and I'm sure Roberts knew it was even coming until it was too late. And it was a difficult pass. It was a difficult pass to throw. I'm a righty rolling to my left. I have pressure in my face. I turn 180 degrees. That that, that went south from the snap, I guess, is, is the best way to say it. Nothing good was going to come out of that unless it came out good for South Carolina State. Best part for Indiana, they are up 38 to 21. Roared out of the blocks, scored on three of their first four possessions with touchdowns in the first quarter. South Carolina State made it a 10 point game on two occasions here in the second half, but Indiana has responded each time. Back for you South could not have written a better script in my opinion. I mean, Indiana really was never threatened, I, I don't believe, to lose the game just because South Carolina State's offense was struggling scoring points. And yet South Carolina State didn't fold their tents. They came back in fighting, and which means that Indiana had to continue to fight. There was no better scenario than what we watched here today for, the, for Kevin Wilson to build the Indiana program. Absolutely. The Hoosiers had to know they were facing one of the best football championship subdivision programs as far as wins are concerned. This is a team that went to the playoffs the last three years in a row. Lost to eventual semifinals Georgia Southern last year in the FCS playoffs. And Tom, most of the time what separates uh, FCS and FBS are the linemen, and that's what separated these two teams today. Around college football with news and notes, and we've got Pitts 21 correction in the latter portion of that game as well. Two and one. And a lot of activity in the Sunshine State. How about all those teams, the Vols, the Sooners, the Canes, hosting all those games traveling south. That ball stripped out. But covered by South Carolina State. And I think we're going to have a face mask added to the Fast end of the play. Two, Got to keep McDonald's your hands low when you tackle. Can't play. keep your hands high. There is a flag. Keep them low. Keep them away from the face mask. Another, Another penalty flag. Mike Cannon, our referee, has gotten some serious airtime. More than Jerry DiNardo. Oh, what a shame. <laughs> <laughs> Although it sounds like an impossibility. We have had quite a few penalty flags. Personal foul, face mask, defense number 23. 15 yards will be in the end of the run. First down. We've got an update on that Golden Gopher game against Miami of Ohio, and the Golden Gophers win it 29 to 23. First great, win of the season. Great win, and great to have Coach Kill out of the hospital. Win win. Most importantly, the carries feeling better now. Great performance on the road to start the year at USC Absolutely. by Minnesota. Yeah. Almost came away with a win there. And now they bounce back. With a victory today. Indiana also bearing its first win of the season squarely in the face with exactly four minutes to go and a 38 21 lead for the Hoosiers. 
know, Tom, you talk about building programs. Derek Kill trying to build a program in Minnesota, just like Kevin Wilson's trying to build it here in Indiana. They go out to USC and they play lights out. They come back, everyone congratulates them. They think they won the game, they lose the following Saturday to New Mexico State. It's all psychological. Wiley wanted to go into the end zone. Too strong for his intended receiver, Antoine Carr, number 49. You look at Indiana a week ago, they played better when they were behind against Virginia. You look at them today, they had a lead, they didn't play so well because it's their comfort zone. They're, they're, they're more equipped to deal with the psychology of catching up than they are with the psychology of protecting the lead. That loss to Virginia, snapping a nine-game winning streak in home openers. Indiana had won 26 of 29 in the home openers, but the loss on the final play of the game, a field goal for Virginia. But a great comeback, 28 straight points, but ultimately losing 34-31. That pass incomplete. And the takeaway from today's game is that they had to protect the lead. Because at some point, as you said, South Carolina State could have won this game. And so they had to protect their lead. Great growth. On two occasions in the second half, the Bulldogs cut that Hoosier lead to 10 points. And what did the Hoosiers do? They came right back with a touchdown, including Kofi Hughes tiptoeing the sidelines for 40 yards and one of the TD passes thrown by Edward Wright Baker on the afternoon. Here comes pressure. Quick trigger. Complete pass over the middle, but that was well short of the marker. Caleb Davis making the catch. Stay tuned for the State Farm post game for scores, highlights, and analysis of today's game. Dave Revson, Tony Banks, Howard Griffith in the studios in Chicago. Big afternoon of college football in the Big Ten Conference as we get a gander at the standings with still to come the fight. 3.36 remaining. From Bloomington, Indiana as the Hoosiers have the ball back and Roberts getting the call. Roberts getting oh so close to 100 yards in the game. You know, you look at the leaders, Wisconsin. Now, Wisconsin played Northern Illinois today as a weakness for Wisconsin. It's the defense, Tom, but not so. I mean, Wisconsin's defense played lights out today, and, it, and if they're going to win at all, they've got to continue to improve on the defense, because as we know, it's a dynamic offense in Madison. Second and seven. We go under three minutes to go. And now D'Angelo Roberts has reached the century mark. 100 yards rushing in the game for number 20. And Cream and Crimson. How about another call? And Roberts is going to take four and five white jerseys to finally bring him down. The more reps the Angelo Roberts gets, the better he's going to be. You know, it's hard to get reps in practice. You don't want to beat the heck out of your running backs in practice. You've got to get game reps. Roberts, the first true freshman since Ben Jarvis Green Ellis in November of 2003 to rush for 100 or more yards in a Hoosier uniform. The law firm, as I called him. I mean, I recruited him at a St. Ong uh, uh, school in, in, in New Orleans. Ben Jarvis is one of the favorite people I've ever coached in my life. He's with the Patriots now. And uh, he, he was a lot like, uh, he was a lot like D'Angelo Roberts. He was a young guy who had it all ahead of him, great ability. Third down for Indiana. Heel got rid of it. Completes the pass to Latimer. And the Latimer of first down for Indiana. Don't forget the State Farm post game show scores, highlights, and analysis of today's games. Dave Repson, Tony Banks, Howard Griffith. And the good part about that is that Jerry DiNardo got to join us here at Indiana and enjoy an afternoon of college football here in Bloomington. As Kevin Wilson, the first year head coach after such great success at Oklahoma, as the offensive coordinator, is going to tuck that first win away and bank it here against South Carolina State out of the football championship subdivision. But you've got to score this as a very nice win. This, one of the best programs in the football championship subdivision, maybe not statistically, coach, but a winning program owned by Buddy Pugh as he brought him in here and, and really challenged Indiana in the second half. I think the important thing, Tom, is that they were challenged, that Indiana was challenged. To come out here today, I, I can't tell you how many hours of teaching that Kevin Wilson now has after this game, and a lot of it is because the South Carolina State team is a good team. 
do you, a hard, hard fought win. Do you think his comfort level was, was pretty consistent during the game? He, he knew that he had the superior athletes. I, I don't think there's any question. And, and the, the biggest difference, the biggest difference between FCS and FBS are the are the linemen, and that, and, and that was that was the difference to them. Next Saturday, another Big Ten football triple header. First, the Wolverines head into action against San Diego State, and the Badgers square off with South Dakota. And in prime time, it's the Gophers hosting North Dakota State. Or you'll see other matchups next Saturday in HD only on BTN. Final seconds ticking off the clock, and Kevin Wilson can enjoy his first win as the head coach of the Indiana Hoosiers, 38 to 21, out of from South Carolina State, out of the football championship. Subdivision. So Kevin Wilson and Buddy Pugh will meet at midfield. Every time Buddy Pugh's team challenged Kevin Wilson's team, the Hoosiers had an answer. Absolutely great victory for Indiana. Uh, you always remember your first win as a head coach, and, and, and they'll get so much out of this video. The next challenge, which they'll start thinking about right away, is at North Texas State. Now they've got to go down there and win two in a row versus two non-conference opponents. Deweese Wilson with a career day, 101 yards receiving and a TD. And for Edward Wright Baker, 21 of 27, 273 yards and two TDs. For Coach DiNardo and Stacy Pates, I'm Tom Wormy from Memorial Stadium in Bloomington, Indiana. Our final score, 38-21, the Hoosiers on top of the Bulldogs from South Carolina State. Coming up next, it's the State Farm postgame show with a recap of a busy week of Big Ten football. Kevin Wilson and the Hoosiers have their first win of 2011. So long from Memorial Stadium.